We're ready to race for 400 laps at Martinsville. Green flag, the cookout 400 is underway. My gosh, Kevin, that was definitely in started the restart zone. I don't want to hear anything more about it. Well, remember, Clint, the flag does start the race. <laughs> I don't care. It was in the zone. Martin Shrek slid way up the racetrack, almost got three wide right there. Yeah, and that racetrack's been walked on, run on, cleaned up, and that outside groove won't be as good this first run as it as it typically is. And you know, if you get hung up there in the wrong position or your car's not handling good, it's tough to get down to the bottom. And sometimes you got to force yourself down to, to find a hole if there is one. But right now there is no hole. And the longer Joey Logano waits, the longer that line will get of cars bumper to bumper, and the harder it will be to go down. And he's trying to get down, and all of a sudden, you got Josh Berry filling that void in the inside. Oh, he got clear. I think Josh. Logano gets in there. line. They're in sixth. Yeah, and that's really what stacks all these guys up. When when Logano goes down low like that, he slows up the corner more than he wants to. And Josh Berry had to slow up, which in turn checks every car in lineup, which creates that accordion effect of usually bumpers hitting bumpers. Now note how clean that concrete is in the corners. We're above 60 degrees, so the track should take rubber today. It certainly did yesterday in practice and qualifying very fast, actually, a lot more than Kevin and I thought. I mean, you can already see that rubber getting laid down in three and four from here. From well, we've had a view. Yeah, we've had a truck race. We've had a, an Xfinity race. We've had practices. And like you said, Clint, that, that track uh, had plenty of rubber on it yesterday, and it's going to rubber up fast. It's all right, so what does that mean? As it does that, guys, it gets very slick. First of all, you start losing the front wheels, and all of a sudden, as soon as it catches up, now you, you've spun the tires up off. You kind of get a push, snap loose sensation. Double file from 14th on back here. Larson half a second up on Bubba Wallace. Calm at the front. Not, Not so, so calm much. at the rear. <laughs> no. <laughs> Typical Martinsville. Yeah, and that, that won't last long because everything that, that is happening in the back of the field just stacks these guys up and the lap times get slower and slower um, and the front of the field is going to catch the back of the field before long. That's exactly right and you, you can run but you can't hide at a track like this. There's no place to go maybe for 15 20 30 laps here. Next thing you know you're mired in traffic and all that ground you gained on the second place car the car behind you has uh, narrowed up as you're trying to navigate traffic. That's what we've been talking about Kevin. Time and time again in that pre-race show, you told me a maneuverable car. You got to have a maneuverable car so you can move around and make passes, whether yeah. that's a lap car or for position. Yeah, Oops. and right now everybody wants to be on the bottom of the racetrack until that rubber really gets thick and the cars start to slide around on the entry and push in the middle with the front end sliding up the racetrack. Uh, you already saw Kyle Larson kind of up the racetrack right there, starting to move around a little bit to just have a good idea of how his car feels and what his best option is on the racetrack. World's fastest conveyor belt all the way back to Carson Hosevar uh, in 25th place on the outside. Everybody in front of him is single file logging laps, but yeah, they're, they're still fighting for position out back here. Well, this is a relatively short stage of only 80 laps, and uh, so you've, you've got to go. You don't really get a great idea of what your car is doing until you get to a lap, about lap 30, 40, 50, somewhere in there, and that's where you really start to understand, and we expect the green flag runs to go. I'm already seeing cars having to straddle this rubber down in three and four in particular. Your leader right there with Larson, you see Truex behind him. They're moving up. Took a shot from the rear of Logano. I think he's in the way. Truex early uh, struggles told us in the in the uh, pre race there Kevin that he made some adjustments on his car overnight didn't like it. Well it looks like Logano is a little bit better through the center of the corner you'll see him roll up right to the center and through the center of the corner and that's just uh, see right there that's just Martin having to wait on the car to turn and, and late to the throttle. All right let's get an update on tricks from Regan Smith. Well, Kevin, you're exactly right. That's what Martin Truex just told the team. They fought tight in practice yesterday, made all those adjustments overnight, but the report from Martin already, it is tight still, just like what he was battling yesterday in the middle. Yeah, and you see that left front tire on the 19 car almost lock up there into, into turn three, and that tells you he's doing everything he can as long as he can to try to slow the car down and get it closer to that curb, but he just can't make it to the curb uh, early center there. Well, he was toying with trying to dime in the corner a little bit and moving around and that's when Logano drove right back to his bumper but look how much faster Joey can roll to him with speed. 
But in the early days of this sport, the bumpers were chrome plated steel. And this is the place the phrase, the chrome horn, was invented. You get up to somebody in mid corner, you're faster than them off, you're going to give them a little boot saying, I'm here, give me room. You know why you use that, Mike? Because it you works. can? <laughs> no, because it works. <laughs> Jamie. Well, Mike, we've been talking about what a big race this is for Hendrick Motorsports. Three of their four cars qualified top 10. That one right there, the 24 did not. He qualified 18. His crew chief, Rudy Fugel, told me they just simply missed it. But despite that, a lot of positive comments about the handling of that race car. They're hopeful they're going to have a long green flag here. They can make up positions. So far, he's up three. Well, you see him hammer the back bumper right there, that two car. Austin Sendrick is like, hey man, I'm I'm way faster than you. See Austin really slow in the car down in the middle of the corner. There he goes. I think these Hendrick cars are obviously going to be hard to handle. I mean, Rick brought uh, four of them, and all four of them are very fast. Everybody knew in that race shop this one means business. David Starr. Part timer racing for Carl Long, first car to go a lap down here at 17, 18 laps now. Up in turn number two, Hendrick Motorsports celebrating 40 years. Lots of ruby red uh, on those t shirts and banners as they celebrate here at Martinsville with their driver, Kyle Larson, out front. Welcome back to the Cookout 400 on FS1. Let's get today's Coors Light race strategy. Well, Mike, Martinsville is a place where you better have a strategy, but you better be smart enough to adjust it as well. If the caution comes out near the end of stage one or stage two and you're way back in the pack, 
maybe stay out, change his right side tires. It worked out for a couple of drivers last year, and he scored stage points. The final stage, 220 laps, split the stage. Now, that can be risky if that caution comes out, but crew chiefs say this is the best way to go. And once you get to about 50 laps to go, if you're up at the front and the caution comes out late in the race, stay out or change his right side tires. Last year, Larson, the winner, right sides. Logano finished second, actually stayed out. Thanks, Larry Mack. Well, Kyle Larson in heavy traffic. Hendrick Chevy's running first, third, 11th, and 13th in their anniversary race. Over the last seven races, all four of the Hendrick drivers have won here. It's a really special weekend. I know it means a lot to him and, and Linda both. Cool to be a small part of it, you know, have, have added to the, the trophy collection a little bit. All four of us drivers hope to make it a Memorable night uh, once again for, for Rick and Linda and, and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, learning a lot about the, the different aspects of the of the company and, and all the different people affected, so it's, it's a big deal. Over 1,500 present and former Hendrick employees and their families here to witness this 40th anniversary race from outside turn number two. Kyle Larson's had a lot of race traffic to deal with. He's already put six cars one lap down. That's what I love about Martinsville. And Kevin, you told us you got to have a maneuverable car. And that what I see in this is Larson being able to inch a little bit further and further away from Bubba Wallace. That being said, his teammate Chase Elliott right there and Chase Briscoe in the 14 both catching them cars. That nine cars fast today, folks. Yeah, we noticed the nine car of Chase Elliott really moving around, had a big diamond, would cut it down low on the exit of the corner, just trying to feel his car out before he got to traffic. But Kyle Larson is picking him up and putting down. He's definitely putting the cars down that don't have any versatility. He's led all 33 laps today, uh, Kyle Larson that is, and he leads the league in laps led this season. Really got through that lap traffic good. Put some distance between him and second place. You can see Bubba back there. Wallace 1.6 back. And just the look on his face yesterday after losing the pole by one one thousandth of a second. But that was not the ironic part. It's like. Him? Yeah. The guy I spun out with a lap and a half to go last Sunday accidentally? <laughs> Him? He beats me for the pole? Yes. Yes, indeed. They the, can't get away from one another. Well, this, and this sport just has a, a funny way of, of those things happening. You spin a guy out, and the next week you're riding around it. And the truck driver with, intros yeah. with him. And you have no choice but to talk to him. And yesterday we saw that in qualifying getting beat by one one thousandth of a second uh, for, for the pole. Kyle Larson beating Bubba Wallace. So. That's just the way this deal goes. You, you've got you've to learn to, to live with that because that won't be the last time. There was nothing worse than riding in the back of them trucks and driver intros with the guy that you wrecked the week before. You're like, uh, hey, hey, man, hey, it's the most awkward conversation you'll ever have. So here's William Byron, who is up six spots since the start of this race, about to pass Alex Bowman for 11th. Or is he? Yeah, well, getting to them and passing them are just two different things with how close these cars are at Martinsville, the shifting and uh, the tight quarters of, of the corner and everything that goes with this track. It just makes it tough. But you see through the center of the corner, William Byron is just better. It just was so reminiscent. How many times have we seen that 48-24 battle it out on this racetrack? Whoa. Whoa. Performance cam showing Ryan Blaney shifting. It also show him, showed him getting a handful yeah. of wheel right there up off the corner. Larry Mack. Yeah, you see Denny Hamlin there in the 11 car. I talked to his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, a couple of days ago, and he said one of the challenges in the race versus practice is you never can duplicate in practice what you see in the race. You guys have talked about the rubber going down. When you only have half the field out there practicing, you don't get that much down. But, guys, what I'm seeing already, it brings back nightmares for my 18 years as a crew chief. <laughs> Same thing. Won't turn the middle, can't put the power down. Watch Briscoe look to the inside of Chase Elliott. Took advantage at some lap traffic. Chase was having trouble with them, and the other Chase pounced on it. Third place at stake here. Yeah, and Briscoe just can't finish the corner. He can't get the, the entry, the arc on the entry, and finish the corner on the exit to put the throttle down like he needs to to complete the pass. Showed it right there on display. Got loose up off with a lot of wheel in it. Chase Elliott drove back into the position. 
Ryan Blaney, he's going backwards. Saw him get a handful of wheel off of off of turn two, and you know, a lot of times you'll get tight to the center of the corner, and then you have a bunch of wheel on the exit of the corner, and it'll slide. Corey LaJoy did not want to give up being on the lead lap here. Regan? We guys talk about Ryan Blaney, the report to the team from Ryan. He is very tight in the middle, but extremely loose off of the corners. No drive in that number 12 car right now. Keep in mind, last year's winner here, his crew chief, Jonathan Hatzler, told me he did not want to be in a situation where he had to work on the middle early on in this race because last time we were here, the top is where they made all their hay later on in the race. All right. That blue flag is the passing flag. It means there's a faster car behind you. Give way. Yeah, and I don't even know why we have the blue flag anymore. <laughs> they, they don't even use it. Here's your Xfinity fastest lap, Bubba Wallace. 2023. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Martin Truex, Chase Briscoe. All running in the top five. Track temperatures, hottest they've been all weekend. 113 degrees in the full sun. No, you see Martin Truex, you you pointed it out, Clint. You see Chase, Chase Briscoe lay the door to uh, Austin Dillon right there. Uh, Austin having a tough start to the race, going a lap down already. Well, because of Chase's inability to be able to finish the corner, he was having trouble with Austin Dillon on his outside. Truex Jr. drove right to his bumper. Truex is on a roll. And that's why on we talk move. about that's why we talk about traffic so much. When you can't, uh, when you're stuck to one lane and you need that whole entry and that whole exit to go through lap traffic that's when you start getting in trouble and losing a bunch of time uh, when, with, to the cars that can be versatile and dime in the corner and do different things with their car than just one line. New crew chief for Austin Dillon this week Justin Alexander back on the box uh, replacing Keith Rodden who takes on a wider management role with the team uh, after disagreements over strategy the last few weeks they've made that change. 33 laps to go in stage one. Kyle Larson has led them all from Bubba Wallace, Chase Elliott, and Chase Briscoe. Next Saturday, FS1 is headed for Texas for racing and for this bitter rivalry. Corey Seager and the reigning champion Rangers battle Jose Altuve and the Astros at 4 Eastern on FS1 Fox Saturday Baseball. Welcome back to Martinsville, where our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear more driven.
Kyle Larson continuing to lead. He's now opened it up in traffic by 1.8 seconds over Bubba Wallace. Well, you really see him starting to move around uh, through turns one and two right there. Go through three and four and see Larson wrap in the bottom. But you see this, this right over here, this rubber right there is starting to get caked up. It's starting to get choppy through there. And when I say choppy, you'll go in there and it'll just grab the right front tire and that car will take off up the racetrack and it'll take you way around the corner and still not rotate. And then it'll, when you finally get it to grip and uh, rotate out of the corner, then it snaps the back of the car. So it's, see Kyle Larson starting to move up. You got to do something to move around that rubber in the middle of the corner so that you can make the car turn and rotate correctly. Seventh place here. Denny Hamlin, Josh Berry, William Byron. And that struggle right there is what separates the men from the boys in this deal. If you can do that, you can maneuver around and pass cars like you were talking about, Kevin. If you can't, you need to get in there and, and make an adjustment and pray those guys can help you. Well, one guy who's made some pretty good ground right there, William Byron. He's he's driven from, a, I think, a little further back in the field than most, and he's made his way towards the front. He's up, Ten he's spots. up several spots, yeah. Start, Thank you, Mike. Started 18th. I, I couldn't spit that out there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and that's a great feeling at the beginning of this race, Clint, when you can wrap that curb longer than everybody else, and everybody else is just dead slow through the middle of the corner with their right front tire stuck, and then they move up and still can't get the front to turn, and then they have to go back through the rubber. It's nice when you can wrap that curb as long as possible. Right along with Christopher Bell right here. Man, he is off the pace, struggling to the race car. I've watched him slip and slide around in that rubber you speak of, way up the racetrack a couple times. He is definitely wanting some adjustments. Look look at this rubber, Clint. Look at this rubber when he goes into the corner right here. As you get right about here, you start to see that rubber start to get choppy. See where it's starting to cake up right there. You can see him straddling, doing whatever he can do to not put that right front tire in it. Nice shots from the Toyota cam on board Christopher Bell. Kyle Larson has led every lap so far, all 62 of them. His crew chief, Cliff Daniels, allowed us to sit in on the team's morning meeting. Enjoy the moment. Don't, don't let that get lost on you today. Literally right outside of our pit stall is 1,500 Hendrick Motorsports employees and families and all the people that you know are here to cheer us on. Whoever's been in pit stall one the last four or five races here has sped. Let the stall and the pit crew do the work. Right now, if a caution comes out at lap 40, I don't know if we're going to stay. I don't know if we're taking rights. I don't know if we're taking four. I really don't know. We're just going to have to observe you know, the track, the rubber content. Here we go, team. Five. Let's have a great day. I love that advice, Clint. Enjoy that moment. When you've got, I always enjoyed when there was more people watching, more pressure on you. Um, just take that moment, and because when you succeed in those moments, it is so gratifying that I don't even know how to explain it to people. Well, the only moment that I heard Cliff Daniels say that I don't believe is he doesn't know. That man is sharp, and he always has a plan. Well, he sounded like somebody told him that Pit Stall 1 has not won a race at Martinsville in 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, if he has anything to do with it, that's going to change. Well, I, I really, really like the way that this race has started. It couldn't have started better uh, for Kyle Larson. And you well, see, he started what, on the pole. Kevin. Yeah, and and he's he's got the the rich get richer, right? He's got the first <laughs> pit stall. He's got the best track position. He's got everything. But I've seen a lot of cars go backwards as 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 we start this race, and he's not one of them. He's put 11 cars one lap down already in the first 67 laps of this race. Well, he's going to have to deal with this 11 car at some point. And the 24. Sixth place here. Yeah, both of those cars are making their way through the field. Coming up on David Starr, three laps down in the 66. Justin Haley has gone two down in the 51. Well, and this is really going to bite Denny Hamlin right here because he's going to get stuck behind David Starr unless he doesn't move up. But you see William Byron not give him any space to try to pick, use him as a pick. Uh, and this is going to get tight. Oh, Denny has to move him up out of the way. Byron struggled here last fall. He only ran five laps in a top 10 position. Finished 13th. How many times you've been here and done that? Come here, run right up in the front, almost win the race, come back the next time, felt like all the tires were flying. Yeah, what did you guys do to this thing? Yeah. It's literally the same car with the same setup, Clint. I don't know what to tell you.
10 to go in stage one this time by Jamie. Well, it's amazing how good Kyle Larson has been at this track the last few times, yet he told me before he got in the car, this place just is opposite of what he grew up doing. He said, you have to slow down to go fast here, and that's not what you do in dirt racing. In the meantime, he's led every lap so far, and they told him, do whatever is comfortable. Guys around you, behind you, are moving around, so find your comfort zone. All right, now right side of the screen, Logano and Hamlin are going to try to pin Byron, who drops in line because there's a lap car ahead on the bottom. Uh, they were going to go to the top side, but now you got Austin Dillon and Kaz Grala, who's all, they're both already one down, just in front of this group. Traffic is a constant here. It is a constant, and that's why we've been stressing so much between the traffic and the rubber on the racetrack. It is so important to have a versatile car and be able to do something different in the corner than everybody else. Well, they've lapped all the way up to 26th place already, 25th. Pretty amazing. Man, they are picking them up, putting them down fast here. Yeah, and one of those cars that they lapped is Chris Busher. And I'm I'm really surprised. And Clint, we were talking um, before the show, just the six and the seventeen just have not run like they like they did last year. And I don't know what they're missing this year compared to that at some of these racetracks where we really expect them to run strong. But that's a that's a huge surprise as we're on board with the build submarines uh, onboard camera. And Chris Joe, Busher. Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin have been very patient with Austin Dillon and I thought patience was about to run out there but Logano just can't seem to get to the bumper of the three and he can't seem to get past Kaz Grala. Well it's running out of patience behind him too. I saw Denny Hamlin lay the bumper to Joey Logano twice now and it's because of the pressure behind him. William Byron Josh Berry right on his heels. Well when those cars are side by side it, it, it makes it even worse because the air in, in front of them just um, is not as good when those cars are side by side like that and Joey Logano's backing up and it's stacking the whole lane up. Man I love the move I saw about Josh Berry in that four car went way outside entered way high cross back over got a low and straight run up off the corner off of two moving around doing what they're not. Well this can only last another three laps will be at the end of stage one. Josh Berry a lot of success here at Martinsville Xfinity car um, late model stock cars so much success around here in the southeast in the late models. This Expect rubber is giving these guys fits. They're slipping and sliding everywhere. Well, you got to make some good adjustments because as you've seen in this stage, it goes by really quick and you got to you got to get them right because you might not get many chances to work on it. Larry. You know one of the quickest cars the last eight or ten laps is Bubba Wallace in that 23 and Kevin you and Clint were talking about this yesterday what I like what I'm seeing with this 23 car he uses the brake but he gets off he lets the car roll through the middle without using a lot of brake. He's rolling right to the leader of Kyle Larson too. Oh, oh, I man. told you the patience is running out back yep. there that, that isn't the first time. Now that's at seventh place as we come to the last lap of stage one. And we got a race. Yes, for, we do. The win of this stage. Bubba Wallace is running all the way back down. He's under him. About had him. There's the green and white checkers. And Kyle Larson gets his first ever stage win at Martinsville. His fourth of the season. He leads all drivers in that category. As the top 10 come across the line, and the caution will wave. Kyle Larson leads all 80 laps in stage one.
Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Martinsville on FS1, presented by Mother's High Performance Car Care. Jamie Little. Well, Mike, the 14 team has been one of the best on pit road this year. Top five for four tire stops, some of the fastest stops of the year. So let's say hello to Chase Briscoe's team. Shane Papala, front tire changer. I've been changing tires for 16 years. The 2017 Daytona 500 champion, back-to-back -back Brickyard champ in 19 and 20, 2023 Xfinity champion, and I wouldn't be here without my loving support of my wife and son, Amy and Lucas. Thank you. I'm Dakota Ratcliffe. I'm the rear tire changer. This is my sixth season in the sport, and I'm your 2023 Xfinity Series champion. John Brunel, tire carrier, 2015 most valuable pit crew, 2017 Daytona 500 winner, father of three, and the sexiest man on pit road with bald head. Dylan Moser, nickname is Moose, Jackman, played football at Wingate University, and I made Sports Center top 10. Corey Coppolo, Bueller, fifth year in the sport, winner at Phoenix in 2022, former Davis and defense alignment. <laughs> he nailed it. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, well done. Richard Boswell, the second, is the crew chief for Chase Briscoe. From Friendship, Maryland, third season as Cup Crew Chief and second with Briscoe. Oh, local legend, Dickie Boswell's boy. Yeah. Miss that man. Here we oh, go. Pit road's open. It's a long way around for the leaders. Here's Regan. We just met Chase Briscoe's team. They get their first chance to go to work today right now. Right now, the 14 car sliding the right rear the entire run. Couldn't get the power down. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., his car is just extremely tight through the rubber. It's making it worse as the rubber goes down on the racetrack, causing it to snap loose off. Jamie? For Bubba Wallace, a really good first stage. He said pretty good. No changes here. The five. He's led every single lap so far for Kyle Larson. He says, my car is good. I just got stuck behind those guys. They held me up. Just air pressure adjustment for Larson. Ricky Stenhouse got turned getting into his pit stall. And because the left rear wheel is outside the stall, he cannot do the stop. Has to back up, turn it around. Not once, but twice. And oh, no. Oh. Wedge wrench. He'll be coming back down. Todd Gilliland. Let's dial up, Bubba. Hey, Bubba Wallace, it's Boy and the Boys up in the booth. You got me? What up, Doc? Man, you are. Oh, five car, that leader was getting really big in that windshield at the end of that run. About the same as last week, so I bailed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the car's really good, so I just appreciate everybody. On this 23 team, we've been working really hard just to get our rhythm back, get our mojo back from the beginning of the season. So it's a long way to go, but it's nice to be fast. So do what we can do here. All right, man, keep it up. Thanks for the time. Second top five in a stage here for Bubba Wallace. Now you'll see Ricky Stenhouse, the orange car, come in. And boy, he got turned around. He was also too fast entering.
Todd Gilliland removing equipment from the pit. That's the wedge wrench and uh, they came back took it out made the adjustment. Ryan Blaney's crewman tried to make the same adjustment but never got the wedge wrench in. Yay. As you see. Oh, That's man. a good little sidestep though huh. A little slip and slide. Then uh, Kyle Bush had an issue with a fuel can. It was still attached when he took off but since it came off in the box no penalty. Stenhouse too fast entering. Gilliland removing equipment. Ryan Blaney had to make a second stop to get the adjustment and also because the left rear lug nut was not tight. Yeah and Chase Briscoe he's going to be salty with his crew too because of uh, the loss in positions and it's so important to be able to keep the track position here if you want to have a chance to win this race. Salty huh his teammate uh, Josh I'm... Berry lost a couple spots as well I think he came in ninth well he... yeah he's 11th now. Chris Buescher got the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. So on the choose, Larson to the outside, Logano inside, up there in row number one. Uh, Chase Elliott, and it was off Chase's front bumper that Ricky Stenhouse spun, trying to get into his pit. Chase on the outside of Bubba Wallace for row two for the restart. What do you think about these two tires? Well, we're about to find out. I never, I never liked two tires, no, sir. ever. But track position is sometimes king, so we're going to find out which one's better, tires or track position. Restart zone on the front straightaway begins here. They're on it deep in the box. Oh, and because, go. because of that, Larson spun the tires big time on the outside. Logano got him. As much as we talked about last week's restart with Denny Hanlon, that was a great use of the box, uh, the restart box there by Joey Logano to stack them up. And Larson spun the tires and lost another spot on the restart. He's going to lose maybe another one to Denny Hamlin now. And these are the types of situations like Joey Logano putting on two tires, right? So we have Kyle Larson who had led and dominated the race, had control of the race, he lost control. Now spins the tires, loses a spot on the restart, now battling with, with Denny Hamlin to just keep third. And these are the types of things that change the complexion of the race just because of the track position. Larson almost had Hamlin cleared on the front straightaway, but Denny sent it in. Well, you see Larson try to keep him pinned down as much as possible on the exit of the corner for just what we talked about earlier. You see Hamlin try to push him up in the middle of the corner so he can get a little better angle off the corner that time and drive up off the corner and he's halfway home. And now he's in trouble because they're stacking up behind him. Those guys are his teammates. Well, that worked out. Chase Elliott got a little bit loose, filled that gap finally. Martin Truex up on the outside of Bowman. That's for eighth place. With Kyle Busch right behind and Truex uh, finds a spot to the inside. Yeah and it's not something that I ever like to do but it's something that you have to do here at Martinsville. You have to force yourself down the racetrack uh, when, when you have a gap and, and that's what you saw Martin Truex do right there and that stacks those lines up and creates opportunities for somebody to get spun out or something to happen but you have to be aggressive. I cannot believe these two tires are holding on like this. I mean, I know it won't hold on to that lead for long. I mean, you see Bubba Wallace getting closer and closer to him. But if you're going to have that and play that that call, you're going to have to make sure you leave uh, uh, exit of two in the lead. And that's exactly what Logano did. He got a good jump on the restart, beat Larson, caused him to spin the tires, got that clean air and track position. If he hadn't have done that and got mired in traffic at the deficit of two tires, he'd have been in trouble. Well, Joey Logano is a tough pass. And He's going to he's going to try to keep that lead as long as possible to because he knows if he gets uh, in traffic that his handling conditions are going to get worse. So whether he has the best car or not. Boy look at this scrum back here. Uh, that was John Hunter Nemechek to the inside. There he is. I'm going to go back, back to Blaney back to Logano for just a second. Twenty laps into this stage already. I'm sold. It gets down to push come to shove at the end of this race and you need to get some track position everybody's going to look at two tires. Yeah I'm not I'm not sold quite yet. I'm uh, just saying for the end of the race not yeah, right now. No I, I hear you there that that's good because I think that um, this this could go south for him pretty quick if he gets passed. Well let's ask our crew chief Larry Mack what do you think of this two tire play. If you're going to try it this is a time to try it. and I guarantee you there's about 36 other crew chiefs that's watching what's going on. My, my only concern with them doing it one they were the only one that did it. 
and knowing that this is basically an 80 something lap run and in this stage should we go caution free that was my biggest concern not so much the run in stage one but how many laps to the end of stage two. So Logano came into the pits sixth and came out with the lead with two tires. Well it, it immediately changed the complexion of the race. Yes sure did. Regan. Well Mike normally we have to worry about braking when we come to Morris, to Martinsville. Unfortunately for Daniel Suarez he has actually got an issue with the throttle sticking a little bit right now. Reported it to the team under the caution flag. They're keeping an eye on that Jamie. Well, Reagan, the guys were talking about the 22 and the decision to take right sides. Paul Wolf told me that that was probably going to be their play. He was very comfortable leaving Joey out there on older left side tires. He said this tire is reacting like it did here in the fall, and they were really good. They were happy with the setup yesterday. He evolved it just a little bit, but so far so good as the 22 continues to lead. Well, it looks like Joey's driving away from, from Bubba a little bit right now, where this is really going to come into play is when he catches the back of the field and that's really we're going to get a read on what Joey Logano's car is is going to do on two tires. Well it tells me that the left sides aren't wearing much. I mean we're now we're approaching 30 laps into this stage and just like I just heard you say he's getting away from second place Bubba Wallace. Ryan Blaney here's what happens when you have to make a second pit stop under caution. You end up back here racing with cars that are a lap down trying to fight your way back to the front Blaney now 23rd he has only gained one position and I bet his radio is not as calm as it was to start the race certainly not. Well Clint you're right I don't I don't say that very often but. You're right about this Joey Logano car and the track position and everything that they've got going on with the two tires. I mean it is it has worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Well all the things that old tires show right where like four drive off immediately goes away on, on older tires that has a, all those ingredients it's taking off it has four drive what's wrong with Christopher Bell. I right. got smoke because he got right. a tire down. Looks like a right front flat. Clear low, clear low, clear low. Oh, it's broke. Tie rod ends broke somehow. Right front. Put rides on it. I well, think it's. I think it's just got a flat. Well, it's turned way to the right, but it may have just been the carcass that's hung out there on the right side of the car. The tire was definitely hung way out to the right. Bell was running 21st on the lead lap. He makes it to pit road. It's broke. Tie yep. rods. Yep. Something's broke in it. If the wheel broke. The wheel might be broke. No, it's oh. tie rod. You're. I mean you're spot on twice. Hey man say my first rodeo cowboy. I, you were always you were always really good here but you're on it today. Good job. Uh, so what I said was that right front is broke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, trouble. You're not going to get back from that one. That ain't just nope. a flat tire fix. Yeah that big trouble for him. Look at the right rear. It's hit as well. He's hit something pretty solid. Another car. Yeah that or it either. And caution is out for debris. Likely from Christopher Bell. We're not sure. Uh, a debris caution is not charged to a particular driver. So at lap 112, yellow flag waves for debris with 25 cars on the lead lap, the last of which is Ricky Stenhouse. Looks like uh, Noah Gregson is in position for the free pass. Yeah, that's really odd on, on Christopher Bell's car. We'll go back and see if we can find some footage of what actually happened to Christopher Bell, but uh, there's no wall marks. It's on the inside of somebody's car. I, I mean, you could tell by just like you said, looking at his right rear, he was hitting somebody. I'm looking in or. And uh, no visible marks on the bodywork. Well, that's an odd one. But, but the tires were messed up. I, what I was saying is he's been in the inside of somebody's, uh, you know, left left door wheel to wheel hard. All right, Larry Mack, uh, we've seen two tires, four work well. We've seen four tires. What this time? 
Well, Mike, we've only run 19 laps and we have 25 drivers on the lead lap. I think Joey Logano and Paul Wolf, their bets made right now, only going 19 laps there. But if you're back in the pack like his teammate Ryan Blaney, Chris Busher, that maybe just got the free pass, if nothing else, come and make more adjustments on this race car. But I think Joey Logano on his 22 has proved that two tires is not bad. One advantage he has, he picks the throttle up sooner and is able to be much smoother with it right now. Thanks, Larry. 25 cars on the lead lap. Eric Jones will come in. Along with a couple of others, including Ryan Blaney, toward the tail end of the lead lap. Under caution for the second time today. Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer have both seen success at Martinsville Speedway. Getting set for the restart at 118 laps. Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace up on the front row. Hamlin and Larson. Elliott and Bowman. Track position, I'm sold. It is king today. And we are back to green. Logano mixing it up. Took off early in the zone that time. That's how you're supposed to do it. Look at Denny Hamlin. Inside of Wallace for second. He has found the front. Been dominant on these short tracks. We got all four Hendrick cars behind him. All four racing each other for position. How about that for a photo shoot? Rick wants them ahead of them, though. He yeah. doesn't want them racing each other for fourth. Fourth on back. Joey Logano out front. Uh, today is also a milestone for the captain, Roger Penske. Team Penske, 6,000 races across all disciplines worldwide. This is their 6,000th race. Logano trying to make it a memorable one for Roger Penske. 
Well, he needs to make sure he keeps that guy happy in that 22 car because that team has definitely turned the corner the last couple of weeks. And Paul Wolf, a big part of that. We hear him talk about North Wilkesboro test and what they found at it. Uh, carried that over to Richmond. Uh, we talk about how much they struggled, but it's also uh, takes two veterans like that to be able to turn something around that quick. Looks to me like what they found at that tire test is they don't matter. They put them two tires on, stayed in front of this field, chasing that clean air, track position. Watch over the Bass Pro Shops camera on board Martin Truex chasing uh, Josh Berry there for 10th. And just ahead of Tyler Reddick and Kyle Bush side by side. Penalties on uh, that round of pit stops. Uh, Josh Williams and David Starr too fast on pit road. Have some uh, Chase Briscoe radio. Briscoe currently eighth. I mean, you guys are seeing it's going to be impossible to pass pretty much all day. So thicker is going to be on you guys really all day to, to get track position because I, I guarantee if we get the lead, it's not good enough to hold it. Step four, they're ready. He's not wrong. No, Seen he's that. not. You saw Larson dominate this race. Now you got a guy on two tires out there with Logano just driving off from him again. Um, you know, if you're Larson, even Chase Elliott, man, I'm very impressed with Chase Elliott today. They got to go through Denny Hamlin and then Denny Hamlin's own uh, car, Bubba Wallace. Putting Denny Hamlin in front of those cars is going to be a tall order getting around him. And Blaney's still mired in traffic as a result of that double stop on the previous caution. Still trying to crack the top 20. Yeah, and his car was was terrible on the on the first round they they actually took the time to come back in and and make the adjustment on the car because they knew they had to do something to make it better but he's definitely passed some cars and moving forward he goes around Brad Kozlowski there who we talked about expecting to run better and now you see Chris Buescher on the outside of Brad Kozlowski these cars were both good on all the short tracks last year they've been okay at a couple places at Bristol and Richmond but not good here today heavy traffic right there Zane Smith trying to stay on the lead lap there in that pack. There's one, two, three. Logano, Wallace, Hamlin. I can't say it enough. 52 laps were in this stage on two lap tires with that 22 car. Yeah, and and the other thing that this does, Clint, this this puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the teams to do two tires. Uh, so I, I'm this strategy is going to really mix this field up on the on the next pit stop. It takes me back to listen to Cliff Daniels. I thought he was teasing a little bit just because the cameras were on. I don't know what we're going to do. Two tires could be two tires. No tires four tires. He wasn't kidding. And no. he knew that ahead of time. And I think that answer or that question's been answered with this 22 car. Paul Wolf making that call. This is the most laps Joey Logano has led on a non drafting track since Phoenix in 2022 when he won the cup championship. And how about Ford? We haven't talked about them much this year. They've been beat up pretty bad. That Ford Mustang up front, their day is looking good. Well, and we expect it. We expect Joey Logano to run good here. We expect Joey Logano to run good at Richmond. Well, we expect him to run good everywhere, and they expect the same thing. And they, they have definitely struggled uh, until Richmond last week after the first two super speedway races. So Logano and a Ford out front, Bubba Wallace second. Uh, for Toyota half a second back Denny Hamlin one second off the lead in third for Toyota and then the four Hendrick cars in a row Larson Elliott Bowman and Byron fourth through seventh. Here's Michael Waltrip. Thanks guys. I'm up here on the Hendrick Motorsports suite with over 1500 of their employees, the beautiful ruby red shirts everywhere. This is Frank Edwards. He was here in 1984 for that magical win back then. It's good to see you, sir. How you been? Been doing just great. It's been uh, a lot of fun being here today. I told them I've done this for a long time, but this is the first time I ever watched a race at Martin as a spectator. I, it was always and kind of little involved in it a little bit, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the day. And this is the same hat I wore when Bodine won the first race right here in 84. How about that? The same hat. Is that awesome? It's so much fun being up here with the friends and family. I remember Frank Edwards when he started with a Rick Hendrick, who came down from Palmer Springs, Virginia, down to Charlotte to 
sell cars, ended up owning a dealership, which then became more dealerships, uh, drag raced boats, and then found his way to NASCAR, formed a team, almost went out of business, but his crew chief, Harry Hyde, said, Rick, the car's ready. The boys want to go. Jeff wants to race. Martinsville's one of his best tracks. Just let us go to Martinsville. Don't shut us down. And Rick said, all right, go to Martinsville. And the rest is history. That Bodie drag race is in the, the Heritage Center, his uh, museum down there. He took me through that one day. What a neat place that is. What a life. What a story. Here's a guy we hadn't talked about much on Monster Energy on board there. Ty Gibbs boy Harrison Burton has been getting bounced around. Uh, they're off the bumper of John Hunter Nemechek. Noah Whoa. Gregson trying to get by. Man, it's still happening. Hold Justin on Haley. And Kaz Grala. That's a pinball. I think he Corey bounced LeJoy. off four cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> I was actually watching that, and it wasn't over yet because Corey LaJoy put him three wide, and it continued for two more laps. That's hitting for the cycle, but not in a good way. No, he's definitely got tire marks on every corner. Kevin, I think, you know, looking out the window here, what's coming? Coming is, is lap traffic for Joey Logano and those two tires. I heard you say that earlier. That's going to be the deciding factor for me. I'll be sold if he can get up through, maneuver around and get up through this lap traffic as good as these guys on four tires. And that's that's really where we saw Bubba Wallace come on strong at the end of that last stage was right at the very end. So we're going to see what happens when they catch the back of this field. You saw Christopher Bell there. His problem was the wheel nut came off, uh, but the wheel lodged itself up there in the right front, so uh, no penalty. Just he had to limp his way to pit road and get it replaced. Bell is three laps down. 39 to go in stage two. Joey Logano leading Bubba Wallace by seven tenths of a second as we take you Fox side by side. Welcome back to Martinsville where Joey Logano is about to get into lap traffic and these are uh, cars that are a couple of laps down. They're mad they're frustrated and they've got cars that aren't working well so Logano is really going to have to pick his way past. Yeah and that three car of Austin Dillon's actually only one lap down so he definitely does not want to go two laps down Mike so he's over if he does. Yeah it is and I don't know how much he can actually fight it as bad as his car is. Yeah he's going to have to 
go too. You don't have the affordability to wait around because you see Bubba Wallace in his rear view already moving around trying to get that point up off the corner doing something different. He gets stuck behind him one second. Bubba's going to be there pounce yeah. on it. And you see when when he caught Austin Austin actually slowed down a little bit to keep his car on the bottom of the corner to even make it harder. So Joey up the racetrack to try to dime in the corner to to get a better run off the racetrack to try to find some position um, to, to put himself uh, in, a, in a position to pass up off the corner. But the diamond uh, it just goes up the racetrack in the center of the corner and you pull the back car back down to the curb on the exit of the corner. Well just look how hard it is to pass. I mean he was way faster than Austin Dillon as he caught him and then look at this Bubba Wallace on his bumper now the 11 Denny Hamlin to his bumper accordions very fast if you can't get around him. Well this is what we've talked about from the pre race show all the way to this lap. You have to have a car that is versatile and, and capable to move around in traffic or it puts you in a position where you become vulnerable uh, for everybody else to to be better and that's what happened to Kyle Larson at the end of the last stage Bubba Wallace ran him down and almost passed him for the stage win. The problem for Logano right here is Dylan's got pretty good drive up off the corner. Well as I see Logano I was listening to Kevin tell me that he was maneuvering around right he's moving around trying to arc the corner in diamond it and get that straight drive off. It doesn't want to answer the call when he's pulling on the wheel to cut back to the left and turn underneath of him. It's slow to that that makes him late to the throttle. Austin Dillon drives back off from him. Well now Bubba Wallace is trying to do the same thing to Logano. He's trying to see if he can find something to put himself in a position to get a good run up off the corner to, to get position on, on Joey Logano and that just sta he stacked everybody up behind him from first to fifth. Yeah. Add Larson to the group now. Look how wide he is on the exit looking turn. Oh he's going to try to get on around him on the outside. That's a dirt racer. Always searching. Well that's one thing that makes Kyle Larson so great. He'll he'll be the first one to try something that you wouldn't think of to try like up the racetrack at Martinsville in the, in the second groove to go past somebody but he's going to move that car around until he finds something better. Well things are about to change they're about to come up on David Starr who is four laps down uh, Christopher Bell who is three down and uh, Harrison Burton trying to stay one lap down going to get very crowded here. Well you see Joey Logano give Austin Dillon a shot but just not going to move him out of the way right there in the middle of the corner. Well especially with a car on your outside. David Starr. And like we say Austin wants to do everything he can do to not be two laps down. I think it also shows you how hard it is to pass. They caught them very fast. That's true but I think when we started today as we see Kyle Larson get on the inside of Denny Hamlin can't quite finish it up off the corner. Now here comes Chase Elliott. And the rest is to follow Bowman Byron Briscoe they're all catching them. they're going to be stacked up. All the way back basically to ninth or tenth. Somebody's going to start moving each other. What did you call that? The chrome horn. Yep. It's fixing to come out. Show its rare its ugly head. Well and everybody knew to start the day exactly what they were into as far as traffic and lap traffic and just how difficult it, it, it becomes later in the run especially in a situation with Logano where his tires aren't as good. Sure, he's run good while he had clean air, but now he's caught the back of the field and and stalled out. So, yeah, and you're only talking 20 laps to stage two in. So, everybody knows what that is. He put two tires on. Paul will put two tires on Joey oh. Logano. March that thing to the front. Clean air. He's been in the lead the whole time. There you're going to go. have more cars zoomed I, into this. Stage. I always, I always like that being in, in in the position that Denny Hamlin is in to be able to say, all right, that's mine. I can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He's the co-owner of that 23 car with Michael Jordan. Bubba way up the racetrack, doing whatever they can do to get out of that stripe. That stripe of rubber on the racetrack starting to build up, get slick. Just keeps getting worse and worse. Whatever problem you were fighting, it just keeps compounding worse and worse. Well, we've we've seen Denny Hamlin make so many passes through the field to get to this position of battling for second place, and he was able to to put himself in a spot to where he could use the bumper a little bit and get Bubba up out of the groove. Clear, got him. Bubba's not going to give up on that outside. I think he likes what he found there. Kyle Larson unable to capitalize there on the inside. Now he's moved back to the bottom, drove right back to the inside of Denny Hamlin. These guys are frustration sets in right here. Look That's at the, what happens. Look at the run Denny Hamlin got off of that corner. 
That that's going to work on Joey Logano too, I believe. He was, went completely to the outside. Now he's rolling the bottom. Well, it's that versatility that we talked about. He's able to run that lane up, and he's able to run the curb. So look at him move up, try to diamond that thing back off. You're not going to be able to diamond it up. You can see how low Logano is leaving the corners. That's what's prompting and tempting him to try this outside. But you see Logano try to split that rubber to get in the lane of Denny Hamlin, and that kind of disrupt the run. But Logano's car is just not as good as Denny Hamlin's through the middle of the corner. And it's definitely not as good in traffic. And this is the same thing that he did to Hold Bubba Wallace, but just a little more aggressive than, than what he did to Bubba. I like this outside that Denny's found. I think he does too. Watch him try to roll to the outside, do a crossover back up. Watch the drive that he gets, the momentum. You can see Logano starting to slip the tires, having to lift a little bit to pedal that thing. Denny able to keep the throttle down. 13 to go, battle for the lead. And Austin Dillon well out in front of it. It's just these two at turn three right now and Bubba Wallace trying to come back to them. Well typical rule of thumb with with these next gen cars is to try to put your car directly in front of the car behind you to make it worse. But um, you see Denny push him up out of the way. This is the problem for Joey Logano is his car just doesn't handle as good as Denny Hamlin's right now. Joey Logano trying to get his first stage win in the last 22 races. Denny Hamlin trying to deny him. Well, now we're going to see if Denny can finish this pass up off the corner by putting the throttle down on the exit. Take, Joey's got that line taken away on the exit of the corner, but Denny rolls a whole car length faster through the center of the corner. If that had been a little bit later in the race, he probably would have forced the issue. Denny Hamlin becomes the third different leader today. 86 laps for Larson, 83 for Logano. Well, and that's what we just said, Clint. We we thought that Denny Hamlin being able to use that outside, he was able to just do everything he needed to do to put Joey Logano in a position to to finish the pass. Well, I'm just blown away that there's only been one car pass at 22 on two lap tires. I mean, this is definitely going to be in the works for a lot of these crew chiefs. That is an option that is on the table, and some of them are going to use it. Nine to go in stage two as you watch our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every lap every mile and every victory on the road ahead Goodyear more driven. Back at seventh place William Byron Chase Briscoe. Battling for some stage points here yeah, and that's the only spot that Chase Briscoe has made up from those lost spots on the on the pit stop and that's why he was a little salty on the radio because. It's just so difficult to to make those spots up that you lose so. And here's Bubba to the inside of Logano for second. And Logano is going to have to work hard here because if he. If he gets door to door too long with Bubba you see Larson just lurking in the background right there. Want to pounce on both of them they get to the bouncing off one another just like that might open a door forget a two for one. That's such a unique piece of these next gen cars with the. The, you know the, the the body being tough and the right side of the car is being the whole car being tough. You can just kind of slide in there and just bump them up out of the way. You have to hit them a lot harder than you used to though. And you don't, things, and you don't even pretty hard. You don't even worry about it now. Logano is just Larson getting, is outside. He's getting fired out from all angles and now you're starting to see the the benefit of the four tires compared to the two tires and track position as it gets worse for Logano his car is just going to continue to go backwards. Yeah this stage can't end quickly enough for Joey. Well now he's back on the bottom I think that's where he needs to be well unless he gets moved which he is he is getting moved. Chase Elliott leaned on him pretty hard getting into three moved him up the racetrack. Well and the bad you have for, to do the bad part for Joey his car he could kind of manage it while he had track position and run around the curb and slow the pace up and now that everybody's able to use that outside lane his car just doesn't drive as good up there as everybody else's and he just he's become vulnerable on the exits because they can make a better run off the corner. Got to hang on for three more laps try to gain some stage points here as Alex Bowman tries to take fifth away and look if, if he loses one more spot that's going to be where he pitted from so. I mean still they, they aren't going to lose a bunch of track position compared to where they were but they let a bunch of laps and 
and probably put themselves in position to know a lot about their car if they had to put two tires on again. Ford looking for its first National Series race win in NASCAR this season after winning all three of those championships one year ago. See some pretty heavy contact with the 48 and the 22 right there. Logano trying to hold on to a top five here. Denny Hamlin looking for those green and white checkers to end stage number two. Seventh stage win at Martinsville for Hamlin more than any other driver. Bubba Wallace second, Larson Elliott, Logano Bowman. Josh Berry picks up the final stage point. Two stages, 180 laps completed, Martinsville. Denny Hamlin in front. Saturday on Fox, the United Football League kicks off week three. The Memphis Showboats will battle the Birmingham Stallions, seven Eastern on Fox. Spring just got stronger. Well, we can, I know the guy in the booth next to me didn't get any stronger this week. That's you. Is that? That's pointed to you, not Mike. Here's your stage points today. Larson Wallace Elliott maximizing in both stages. Such an important pit stop right here. You heard Briscoe say, I can't get it down on that racetrack. I need your help, boys. Regan. And there's been a lot of discussion on Chase Briscoe's radio about what the pit call would be. He was hinting that he wanted to do two tires, but it's going to be four for him, just a little bit too tight, but got better as he ran. Jamie? 22 at Joey Logano led 83 laps there on right side tires only. So, of course, it'll be a four tire stop here. You see a chassis adjustment as well. Bubba in the 23 said he has to slow down to keep that car underneath him. It got a little too swingy. The 11 at Denny Hamlin pretty happy with it. 
lot of congestion around the turn turns one and two where there are pit stalls and the exit of pit road there at turn two. Denny Hamlin the leader Elliott up two on the stop and Ryan Blaney picks up 12 spots from 20th to 8th. Shannon and Jamie here in the race day studios getting you ready for stage number three. Any th uh, surprises so far? Uh, not really. It's been about Toyotas and Hendrick Motorsports like we've really seen all year, especially uh, at the short tracks. And I know that Denny won that last stage, but I've got my eyes on Hendrick Motorsports. I just think it's the 40th anniversary. We love great stories in sports, uh, knowing what Hendrick Motorsports has. All four of those cars painted the same, Shannon. I've yep. got my eyes on all four of those guys, mainly Chase Elliott right now in P2. Yeah, speaking of stories, Denny Hamlin and restarts been the story all week. Let's see how he handles this one, Mike, as he's out front. Former employees and families. Uh, Daniel Suarez too fast exiting and Ryan Blaney got two tires. He got four on the last caution. So he just got two picked up eight spots two tires for Ty Gibbs. But look at the contact here Gibbs at the top trying to come out. Boom. That was... Then watch down here at the bottom. Watch Logano pull out gets blocked by Bowman has to check up here and stocks them all up. That's his two spots lost. Close quarters. Yeah that's a traffic jam right there. Daniel Hemrick the free pass on this the third caution of the day. Be a big win for that Chase Elliott in a nine car. To be able to put this 40th anniversary win together for Hendrick Motorsports. Man. Well, and on top of that just for Chase Elliott in general we, we've talked yeah. about maybe not uh, doing everything that they wanted to do as far as performance but to be up front and have a chance here that's all you can ask for. Well, whatever we talk about during the race, you will hear all week long on Race Hub. It's been a busy week on FS1. Expert analysis and opinions, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Drew Blickensdurfer guests on Tuesday. 
Chad Knauss and Eric Almirola, yesterday's winner here on Wednesday, and Chris Busher will be on Race Hub Thursday. All the news and all the controversy on NASCAR Race Hub. Adam looking pretty tough right there. Man, did he? Look like a gladiator, didn't he? He's intense. Hey, there's a Martinsville hot dog. He's ordering right. another set right now. More as or less. Speaks. Yep. Bring me some more. Another dozen. Some more. Jamie. Well, Mike, we were talking about the 22 and staying on those left side tires, about 180 laps. No wonder why Joey Logano was falling back. Check this out, the wear on the left rear right here. Look at this flap and all the wear on the left front as well. And hang on, hung on for him to take four tires on that stop. We'll see what he can do now. Wow. wow. 180 laps on one set of left side tires. All right, Hamlin inside, Chase Elliott outside. Zane Smith returned to pit road to tighten the loose wheel. And we're ready for stage three. It'll be 206 laps to go as we're just shy of halfway. But he goes inside the box. What do you think, Kevin? <laughs> Hamlin fires off. And Elliott is right with him headed for turn one. Well, that's the that's the hard part of of going that late in the box for whatever reason it just becomes hard to to gain an advantage as the leader so. Well that's exactly why he didn't do it last weekend. I mean it takes the advantage away from you the longer you wait. Look at this Chase Elliott to the lead cleared him. It also made every every person in the grandstand stand up. Look at this. All right. Most popular driver back in the lead. Denny's car's just not taking off quite as good as he would like to. That tells me she's set up probably low on air, set up for that long run. Still a lot of action on the outside. Logano, even with Bowman, that's for fifth place. And Byron with Briscoe for seventh. See Ryan Blaney right there in the 12 car on two tires right in the middle of all this action. It'll be interesting to see how long he can hang on with those two tires and if he can keep his track position. We noted right before uh, while we were in break, Clint, just how many cars he had passed since he had his problems on pit road. Well, the other pro the difference is between him and what I saw in Logano is Logano had the affordability of that clean air leading out there all by himself. That saved a lot of tire. He was able to manage that. Blaney's not going to have that opportunity mired in this traffic like that. He's going to have to have his elbows up leaning on those tires, whether it's the right front of that right rear a lot more as he's trying to race door to door with cars. Yeah. Right right now is is not it's not going to be as bad as it is in 50 laps. That's when it'll really show up like it did with Joey Logano and you just hope that tire doesn't come apart like Joey's did. See him preload the shifter reach up either turn on a fan it was too quick to grab the brake bias. So explain preload please. Yeah you'll see his Ryan Blaney's right hand he'll preload the shifter by putting some pressure pulling back on it and that, that car will fall right into gear when it gets close to the rev limiter. That's just something that the teams have, have figured out. Just a quicker way to shift. You don't have to let off the throttle. I was going to say, so what you're saying is he's, he's leaving it wide open. As soon as it That's just right. barely bumps the rev limiter, that thing falls right into gear. It takes it takes pressure. And how you relieve that pressure is either let out of the gas or, like you're saying, hit that rev limiter, just bump it just ever so slightly, takes that pressure off them gears, goes right back into the next one. Twenty percent of the laps that Chase Elliott has led in his cup career have come here at Martinsville. Look at this three oh. wide on the outside of those two tires. Careful boys. Yeah the two tires on that 54 car has put him in a position where he is just getting beat around in the middle of traffic. He's all over the place. Yellow waves turn four. Christopher Bell spins around. 
That'll be the fourth caution of the day. Not been a good day for Christopher Bell and company. They got, hey, as I say that, it's about as lucky as it gets as the right front lug nut falls off the wheel and it stays in there. That was a very lucky situation that they were able to uh, survive. So Bell stays two laps down. Michael McDowell should be the free pass on this, the fourth caution flag. Does this put us in any kind of a window? You like it, Larry? We're going to stay out? What we're we doing? It's it's a bit of a stretch to make it for here. If you could stretch it to 175 laps, and right now we got 197. So uh, Bell was inside Kaz Grala when the car broke loose there. Yeah, it looks like he just spun all on his own. Yep. And who, who knows the the damage that that right front tire did and what it did to the balance and dragging everything on the bottom of the car when the tire was flat. That's right. It certainly didn't help anything. Yeah, it just spun out. Trying to stay off the car on the outside. Hang on, touch. Lost it. Yeah, and in that in that dark strip of rubber around the corner, it just becomes slick. And if you get the right rear tire or get it uh, hung in the rubber wrong, it just it becomes difficult to hold on to the car. Pit road is open. No takers up front. No, not among the top ten. Truex looking. Is he coming? Yes. And so is Ty Gibbs. Kyle Busch behind him. And Brad Kozlowski. The rest of the leaders stay out. Under caution. 204 laps completed Martinsville. Plenty of contact. I love showing off our NASCAR fans, and boy, do we have some here in Martinsville. We got them from Ohio here, New York, local boy right here, and the best one of all, we got Harvey. <laughs> Harvey, go get me a beer. Yeah! <laughs> that is the best behemoth Harvey I've ever met in my life. That, ladies and gentlemen,
Cleveland is a tailgate king. Here you go. That is the best. Have a hot dog. The best, no way. No <laughs> chance in hell. That is the best Harvick ever. Did you? Can you believe it? He minded. I've Let seen me try this. Dogs, Harvick, go horses. get me a beer. I haven't. I haven't. Se I haven't seen any dogs or horses named Boyer. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, thankfully, green flag. That is a tailgate king, folks. It was awesome. Chase Elliott inside of Denny Hamlin. Bubba Wallace right behind. Kyle Larson on the outside second row. To the point, baby. Look at them, folks. They love it. Then Bowman, Logano, and Briscoe. The first of the cars that pitted is Martin Truex back in 21st with Ty Gibbs. Well, that, that restart worked out a lot better for Denny Hamlin, being able to not have to fight Bubba Wallace or anybody else to get to the bottom of the racetrack. See Joey Logano being really aggressive back there, blocking Chase Briscoe. But that allowed Byron to get on the outside of Logano. They fight for sixth place. You can see the pressure ratcheting up on these cars. Briscoe into Logano. Logano's been into a couple cars. Blaney was in the back of them. It's still, you got to be mindful, it's only halfway. And Byron is going to clear Logano. Yeah, and you look right there on the outside. That's Todd Gill in the 30, 38 car running in eighth spot. Overcame that penalty for uh, leaving the pits with the wedge wrench in the back window. Nice comeback. Well, we have some uh, radio from Todd Gilliland from that miscue on pit road. All right, you want good news or bad news? There can't be any good news, so enlighten me. Well, the good news for me is we got you driving, so I'm excited about that. Our pace ain't too bad. We'll adjust accordingly here, rest of the race, and try to help you at some point. And they did. You know, they've got him up in the top 10. Well, what was the bad news? I thought it was all pretty good, but I would say <laughs> the bad news is, buddy, you got to come back in. You it was a long time getting there. Long time getting there after having to make that extra pit stop. Jamie? How about Chase Elliott leading right now? He told us in practice and qualifying yesterday that they felt like their setups had gotten stale over the last couple of years here. So they had a different approach this time around. And he said, so far, so good in this race. The car's doing what he wants it to. Just a little bit tight to start this run. And Mike, so far today now, he's led more laps today than he has all season. 23 so far, Jamie. And pulling away. More than a second over Denny Hamlin, one of, if not the largest leads of the day. Well, what those comments tell me is, you know, they felt like they didn't keep up with the evolution of, of the way that things change. And a lot of times when you go to a racetrack, you think you need to stay exactly the way that you are. And that's not how this garage works. It evolves on a weekly basis. Everybody continues to get better. There's way too many smart minds and people. And if you just sit around and do the same things that you've been doing before you know it, you're way behind. Watching these two for a while, Josh Berry and Stenhouse. Berry, car just hasn't. He's lost some track position. Uh, you noted that earlier, Kevin. It just hasn't been able to uh, overcome that. We're told they had a slow pit stop on the four that time, which is what put Josh Berry uh, back here battling for 18. That yeah. wasn't the first time either. He lost a couple of positions yep. before that. Still slipping, sliding around, bouncing off of one another. Saw Chris Busher getting into the picture there, and the BuildSubmarines.com cam. And we have foot cam on board a busher. Oh, here we go. Watch that throttle pedal. Now you heard him get loose up off the corner, but you'll notice when when you hear the gear shift, you see his foot stay wide open. There it is. You yeah. heard the shift too. Did you hear? So on the back stretch, he actually lifted a little bit, burped that throttle to put it in gear. That time, he left it wide open. No. So what happens with, with this strategy in there, Clint? When you get up off the corner and the, the car starts to spin the back tires, if it gets into that rev limiter, the car actually shut off. 
it, oh, okay. if you don't have the, the, the gear shifter preloaded. So uh, when you're in the middle of the straightaway and the gear shifter is preloaded, and you don't, you don't have to let off the throttle. But that's the only disadvantage to a package like this uh, is if it spins the wheels and gets up into that rev limit, it'll actually shut the car off for a brief moment. Well, he definitely used the throttle to shift once, and then that fur on the front straightaway left it wide open, like you said. And I tell you, you could hear how much faster that shift was, too. It's all about time, and, and when you get those shift strategies in there and you don't have to let off down the straightaway, it just, it just takes less time to do everything and makes you run faster. And if I'm hearing this right, you're picking up that this is something that's evolved this year. This isn't something you did last year with your car, right? Or did you? I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, this is... These, uh, all three of these manufacturers have some sort of shift strategy, and um, you see the, the Ford strategy right there, but you see how smooth it is with everything that they have going on and the way that they can make that, that car fall into gear. I mean, you could hear it. You didn't even have to see it. You could hear how much quicker and smoother that shift was than the one prior. Into the final stage of the race, and Chase Elliott leading Denny Hamlin by two. Bubba Wallace by two and a half and Kyle Larson by three seconds. Welcome back to the Cookout 400 on FS1. 234 of 400 laps in the books. 2.2 second lead for Chase Elliott. Time for our Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. All right, Clint, who you got your eye on? I'm going with the obvious. I know, Kevin, I'm going to take the nine car. Chase Elliott been 41 races, clear back to Talladega 22 but since he's won. Somebody's going to have that 40th anniversary, Rick Hendrick. Might as well be Chase Elliott, America's most popular driver. I think it's going to come down to a late run, and as good as Bubba Wallace uh, has been on the late run, I, I'm going to take Bubba Wallace. He's a two-time Truck Series winner here, and I think he's going to get it done. Well, Denny Hamlin is a five-time winner here. He's won the last two short track races. Controversy and checkered flags follow Denny Hamlin. Keep an eye. 
on the number 11. Not your credit one bank ones to watch. How was, the, you guys how was the hot dog, dog, by the way? The hot dog was actually better than I expected it to be. Good. What is that bubbling sensation? I, I, I hear <laughs> bubbling. That's my personality. <laughs> Perfect. Best joke you've had in a while. Yeah, I've been. Chris Myers has has been giving me uh, some some insight on good jokes. Don't take anything from him. That's the worst dad jokes in the history of Earth. <laughs> All right, Chase Elliott about to get into some traffic here. Christopher Bell is now two laps down in the number 20. And then just ahead, Harrison Burton trying to stay one lap down. And Kaz Grolick up there trying to stay on the lead lap. Look at that way all the way up out of the rubber, all the way back down on the exit of the corner. Look at that, Clint. If he can continue to do that, that's going to continue to give him a lot of options as we go through the end of this race. It takes back to that last stage and, you know, at the ending where they were running that outside line and going up all the way up around them. The tough pass is going to be that Josh Williams in the 16 uh, running a part time schedule. He is the last car on the lead lap uh, trying to stay there. That's a great run by him. As we've seen all day, when the leader has caught the back of the pack, that's really what's bunched things up and allowed the second, third, and fourth place car to, to catch up and fill that gap pretty quick. Tyler Reddick has made his way up into the top 10, Regan. Mike, that's right. He's been steadily progressing his way forward all day after starting 19th, trying to get only his second top 10 and nine starts at Martinsville. That car, Billy Scott told me, is identical to his teammate Bubba Wallace because they struggled in practice. It worked out really good for them to know that they could lean on those notes as to what Bubba had going as he was a little bit better in qualifying. Right now, just a little bit too tight in traffic for Tyler Reddick as he tries to work his way forward. Well, he doesn't have to worry about traffic right now. He's got a huge gap in, in front of him, so. Uh, this should be a time when when we really see what his car has and we see right behind him with Brian Blaney on those two tires hanging in there pretty good Clint. Hey, they are just like we saw with Logano. I'm sold. You get down to the closing laps of this race and an untimely caution comes out. I'm staying out two tires something. I want clean air track position. It's. You can see these guys and the struggle they have just getting one position pass takes 15 20 30 laps to get it done. Now Daniel Suarez the first car on four tires back at 17th place and trying to rebound from uh, a speeding penalty back at lap 180. Chase yep. Elliott leading for a uh, Rick Hendrick in their 40th anniversary race. With Larson fourth, Byron fifth, and Bowman sixth. Let's check back in with Michael Waltrip. Well, guys, the celebration continues. I'm with Chad Caps, who's a machinist at the shop and has been at Hendricks for 18 years. How cool is this event today? This is very awesome. Thank you, Mr. H. Everybody's saying a big thank you to Mr. H. I know Mr. H is a family man, and this is your wife. I'm glad y'all came out to the races. Are you enjoying the experience? Yes. Awesome. It's fun back here, guys. I'm glad we're able to wander around and say hello to these folks. Thanks, Michael. Well, uh, Rick Hendrick not able to be here today. He is recovering from knee replacement surgery, was scheduled to drive the pace car today. But earlier today, uh, earlier this weekend, he talked with Chris Myers and talked about the Hendrick secret ingredient. So we, we see Jeff Gordon from broadcasting and now he's got his business owner starter vest thing. You walk starter out. vest. Yeah. <laughs> How much longer do you want to do this? Uh, until it's no fun anymore. My mind is like it was when I was 18 and 20 years old. Legacy at Hendrick Motorsports is not me. It's the people that won the races and they're there every day. And I want that to go on long after I'm gone. It's the people. Absolutely. It, you're only as good as the people that you have around you. And Rick Hendrick is, is one of the best at putting people in the right places. Jeff Gordon, a, a big part of, of everything that, that goes on. But I can promise you one thing, Clint. He also likes to win. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I will say this about people. 
People need a leader to follow, and there's no better leader than, than a guy like that. That mindset, the work ethic, the drive, the determination, the will to win. He wins in everything, whether it's in this racetrack or on Monday selling cars. That means he's winning. Well, this is what we talked about, Clint, when the leader catches the back of the pack. We've, we've seen this before. Denny Hamlin just becomes more able to maneuver his car in traffic. We saw it the last run with with uh, a different leader with Joey Logano leading the race and now it's Chase Elliott he caught that 16 car about the about to get passed again by Denny Hamlin who can maneuver his car better in traffic and now he's using him as a pick that 16 car Josh Williams as you talked about Chase Elliott still holding tough on that outside whoa oh, Bubba Wallace slid locked you up saw the left front tire. yes sir you saw that left front lock up so Hamlin may get the lead here and Kyle Larson may get third from Bubba Wallace Side by side, two by two, three by three, including We've the lap car. Seen this so many times over the years. I've experienced it behind the wheel. Denny Hamlin, nobody manages tires better than Denny Hamlin. He's so good at that. Long runs, he manages those tires, keeps that car, the balance on that thing neutral with his driving style, doesn't abuse the brakes, always there on a long run. Well, Here he I, is again. I, I think the, the one thing that is missing from that conversation as well, Clint, is he know what he wants. He knows what he wants in the race car in practice. And Martinsville is a racetrack that every race is a building block for the next one. And, and that's the race is really the best notes that you have in order to, to lead to the next event. Because we heard him talk earlier, um, you know, practice is tough to know what you have. And until you get into this race and know what you can do in traffic and how the rubber builds up, you just you don't know how your car is going to be able to do it. Chase Hill is doing a great job. He's going to have to take that exit away from him. Can't quite get cleared again. There's traffic coming ahead. He's going to get Denny's trying to stay on that bottom and get into that traffic. You see Nemechek ahead of them and use him as a pick just like he did the last. And ahead of Nemechek there are four cars all under a blanket. As they battle side by side for the lead with 143 laps to go in Martinsville. Hamlin's last win here was in March 2015, the same day that Chase Elliott ran his first NASCAR Cup race. Wow. How about that for a stat. Denny ran him up the racetrack that time, got him clear. So Hamlin cements the lead for now over Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, and William Byron, the front five.
but I was leaving RCR, um, and so there was a lot of tension between everybody at RCR and myself at that particular point because everybody was mad that that we were leaving, and I didn't take a liking to. Uh, the three spinning me out. So I just held on as long as I felt like I could right there without getting beat up um, by the whole team. Uh, to keep, it, to keep him from making their pit stops, he'd take off right there. He was about to get lapped. And that was my whole goal was to make sure he didn't win. So okay. I was just going to hold him in his pit stall as long as I could. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursday is a different episode from Tuesday. Who's guesting this week? Now we've got um, old Yankees manager Joe Girardi on our show this week. So it'll be fun to talk about the start of baseball season and he he had a lot of great insight for me as I was going towards the end of my career on when the right time was Watch yeah this, this huge hammer that you about got hit with I did yeah oh, right oh that's the big hammer I speak of that would have left a mark Kevin it probably would have Boom. your truck looks a little worse for the wear there yeah, and that was his pit stall, so I was just trying to sit there long enough to where they couldn't make a pit stop and <laughs> make sure that they didn't win the race. But those are the emotions that, that come out. Not not anything that you're proud of, but happens. But you made your point. Yeah, I guess. I miss those days with you. You, you liked when I made, Got a, mad. made a fool out of myself? No, I don't think so. I just think, you know, there's people that get mad, then there's Kevin Harvick. It was awesome. Legendary. Well, I haven't seen anybody matter in a long, long time than last Blocking. Sunday, uh, Martin Truex. But a week later, uh, the page has turned. We're at a different racetrack, different day, and here we go. And uh, Truex got a little off cycle on pit stop, so not part of the discussion right now. He's in 22nd as we watch Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, William Byron. We've seen these two have trouble before. <laughs> Dayton cleared back all the way back to last week at the end of the race with uh, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson, and they're uh, they're getting back after it again as they're trying to get around Nemechek. Well, we'll see it, just how tough it is to get around even a lap car. Uh, you see, oh. Larson tried to shove the 42 car out of the way right there. He didn't really appreciate the fact that he's just sitting in there racing in the middle of uh, himself and Bubba. That, that, that battle goes back to Las Vegas several years ago. It's it's been a battle for sure and honestly those cars I thought Larson was a little bit better than Wallace I'm super impressed with the, the job that Bubba Wallace has done today he's been fast all weekend long was fast in practice qualifying been up front in that top three all day long I still think Bubba has one of the best really long run cars as we go deeper into this run this is about the time that we saw Kyle Larson start to fall off earlier uh, when Bubba Wallace almost passed him for the first stage win. And I think that very same thing is going to happen with this nine car Chase Elliott. But I do I, I do not think that that Hamlin car is going to fall off. I think that car will stay agree. steady Eddie and, and uh, going to be hard to handle it. They're going to need a caution. They're going to need pit stop something to go uh, you know out of the ordinary for that 11 car. Do well. not think on a long run if it's a 30 plus lap run you're going to beat the 11 without some help and Chris Gabehart has told him on the radio that he needs to get as big a gap as possible because it gives him more options on, on from a strategy standpoint and so Denny Hamlin's going to keep charging hard and try to make sure he puts as many a lap down as possible and get as big a gap between him and second place as possible Inside of 125 laps to go at Martinsville. How about an FS1 Sunday afternoon? Crank it up for all you hot dogs.
copy. One hundred twenty laps to go at Martinsville Speedway. At least one round of pit stops on the way. Speedway as we welcome you back to the cookout 400 on FS1 Denny Hamlin in front of Chase Elliott by 1.7 seconds. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear more driven. Larry Mack when do we expect pit stops. Yeah Mike whether you pitted at 185 or 205 the last two cautions you could probably run another 60 70 laps on fuel. But I'm seeing over a second fall off right now going back and watching this race a year ago which had a long green run in the final stage. If you split this stage even adding in that last caution I'm saying once we get north of about lap 300 we may see them start peeling off. But Mike did you ever play a game of chicken. If you do pit under green you hope that everybody else pits under green because you will be trapped one to two laps down if that caution comes out. Thanks Larry you saw Chris Gabehart here. Uh, let's talk a little basketball. Uh, Hamlin's crew chief and Blaney's crew chief Jonathan Hassler uh, both went to Purdue where they were classmates and Hassler was a crewman on Gabe Hart's late model uh, that he drove while in college over on the women's side. Look what Dang happened it. today. Caitlin Clark comes to an end unfortunately. Well Don Staley squad 87. Iowa the runner up for the second straight year. Man I hats off to South Carolina but man I I loved what I got to watch out of Caitlin Clark. I've never really watched women's basketball before until this year obviously because of her obviously because of all the buzz but it was legit. I, I I almost felt bad for the men's basketball. They were. She put on a better show than they did. Absolutely. I'm glad you have time to watch basketball. Now Purdue takes on UConn tomorrow night for the men's championship. Uh, let's see. Ryan Priest, Joey Logano, and I are from Connecticut. None of us went to UConn. Uh, when I went to college, there were more cows than students in stores. Now all that's changed. Let's check with Jamie. Yes, and how 
hats off to Purdue going to the championship tomorrow night. I'm looking at Bubba Wallace right now. He's settled back in third. That's pretty much where he's been all race long. But the last pit stop, he came in and lost two positions. Now take a look at his pit box on the right. You see it's actually on the curb. His crew chief, Booty Barker, chose there, even though they had the second choice. And I asked him why. He said he likes the way that the timing loops are. It actually helps Bubba on exit. The downside is it's tougher on the crews. And we saw it there when they lost those two spots. Oh. Well, now let's talk Denny Hamlin and pit stops, because in the six races here, since the last of his five Martinsville wins, Hamlin has had eight speeding penalties at this track. He likes to run it right up to the edge. Well, you have to run it right up to the edge here and get everything that you can. Here comes William Byron, the first one to come to pit road. It won't be long. You're going to see the rest of them coming. Yeah, this will this will definitely put everybody in a box to have to make some decisions. So the cycle starts a little early. Nine's here. coming. Atlanta, Bubba's two, coming. Nine, here comes a five. Second, Jamie. third, and fourth. Well, it's the game of chicken, right? One comes, they're all coming. So William Byron, the first to peel off into his pit box, said they're going to leave the balance alone. Pretty happy with it as they put four tires on there. His teammate, Chase Elliott, led a good portion of this race, making his way on down pit road. Bubba Wallace from the third spot. We just talked about his last pit stop. We'll see how this works out for his crew. As the nine goes to work, no adjustments there for Chase Elliott. Four tires stopped. Denny Hamlin as well peels off as he makes his way down. There's Bubba Wallace's crew. They're on that curve. This is the downside for the crew. Have to work a little bit harder. But the upside, that's straight away. He has that opening right there so he can hammer down when he needs to. As you see, Kyle Larson came in. Four tires for him. Pretty good on his balance. Just stuck back in traffic. Denny Hamlin comes to a halt in his stall. Four tires and fuel. Alex Bowman, Josh Berry finishing up. Kyle Busch is in. Here's Joey Logano, Todd Gilliland, and more. You see Denny exiting. Here they come around here. I think the nine might get him, Kevin. Yeah, and coming coming out of the pits right there, it's really hard to get the front tires to turn. So Chase Elliott's got his car wound up. Denny Hamlin stayed out on the track too long. He's clear. Is he going to move down? He's going to give it to him. Now this is not for the lead. Currently it's for 11th place. Chase it might Briscoe, as, the leader. As long as that caution doesn't come out, that is the race for the lead right there. It will be, yes. That was huge. Stayed out too long, 11. Elliott was 9, 1.1 seconds back when he pitted. Look at the difference that it made for William Byron. He was the first one to pull the trigger, got on pit road. Yeah, and we're talking one lap. And the big difference in that lap time is, is over a second, like Larry said. and that. That puts uh, Denny Hamlin behind Chase Chase Elliott there, which what will be the race for the lead once this cycles around. But I think the other thing here, we have Martin Truex who had 20 laps um, fresher tires, and there's some other guys that are going to take a chance and try to gamble and run this thing longer. Chase Elliott is going to have to do a better job getting through traffic. Put the bumper to him. Do whatever it takes. Do not get held up behind him. Denny Hamlin is on his bumper and will pounce just like he did last time. I think Denny Hamlin, had, that's exactly what I was talking about. Move him out of the way. Here comes his teammate, William Byron, is going to use Sinhouse as a pick for Hamlin. This is big. Well, he's got to be careful doing that because if he gets a caution, it, it puts him in a bad spot. We're still. still comes another Hendrick car trying to get to the inside of Denny Hamlin. He cannot be mired behind all these cars. He might be able to get one or two of them, but I don't think he can get all of them. So again, they're racing for 11th on back. The first 10 drivers on the scoring pylon have not yet made their green flag stop. This could put Hendrick one, two, three when it all cycles out. Now, obviously, that has to happen. Still several cars to get on the pit road and make that happen. All right, here's some Denny Hamlin audio. Two seconds slow on pit road. One week you have the fastest stop, and the next week things are different. Here's your leader, Chase Briscoe, who was last on pit road lap 185. Well, he can't complain too much because that's what won him the race last weekend. And there is the difference. Yeah, so one second on the lap time, one second on the pit stop, that's two seconds total, and put them side by side. All right, Briscoe comes to pit road and gives up the lead to Austin Sindrick. 
Briscoe, one of the five fastest crews on their average four tire stop this year. I'll tell you who's the fastest, William Byron. This car has come to life for the 24. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of this race. This racetrack goes through through an evolution of changes as it puts rubber on the racetrack, as the shadows start to come over the over the grandstands, and the racetrack starts to change as as you run this and progress through the race, and especially as you run these long green flag runs, and that rubber really builds up in the corners. How many times have we seen that 24 find the front of Martinsville? So Chase Briscoe gets back on track, but because he stayed out so many laps after the Hendrick cars, he's now a little more than half a lap behind. Well, you saw it, and Kevin noted it. I mean, one lap difference between these cars was all it took for William Byron to, to catch these guys, and then them to be able to pass the leader, Denny Hamlin. Josh Berry will have to do a pass through because of an uncontrolled tire on his pit stop. Yeah, they've had a miserable day on pit road. There he's going to move him up the track a little bit more and take this position away. William Byron. Still several cars to pit. McDowell, Keselowski, Grawley, Gibbs, Gregson, Truex. Eight of them out there. Yep. And Cedric getting a little patient with Austin Dillon there. It's a little shot in the arm for this race. This is a huge moment, momentum change. Certainly a big shift for the 11 car, Denny Hamlin. And then that's. Uh, Byron, I mean, them pitting early, yes, got him that track position. That was a great heads up call. Byron was two and a half seconds behind when he made his pit stop. But by pitting first and having the advantage of those fresh tires, he was able to drive up ahead of his teammates and currently in eighth place. Well, that's one thing winning a race puts you in a position to, to take chances and do things like that. And, and here at Martinsville coming to pit road early is a big gamble because if the caution comes out or something happens but they were the the very first car on pit road and they are reaping the benefits. Noah Grixon has made his stop and now Cindric comes to pit road and gives up the lead to Daniel Suarez. Brad Keselowski is also in. So that will leave just four cars in the uh, top half dozen that have not been to pit road Suarez Truex Gibbs and Grala they're going to need a caution soon very soon Suarez and Truex car length apart this is for the lead Zane Smith to the inside trying to get a lap back here. One of the three that he is down in the 71. Yeah, and a tough part, like we've talked some of the other weeks, for a, for a car like Martin Truex Jr. is having to get out of the way for the lap cars and running that outside lane and not not being in the part of the racetrack that you have to be in to make the the amount of lap time that you need uh, with old tires. So it just gets it, the, the problem kind of gets compounded as you as you run long. Ty Gibbs has made a stop. And now Michael McDowell peels off and heads for pit road. We're going to take your box side by side, but don't worry. If they make pit stops, you won't miss it.
Long green flag run at Martinsville. Daniel Suarez and Martin Truex have stayed on the racetrack. Suarez is the leader. But William Byron, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson have now passed Truex, bumping him back to fifth spot. Uh, Larry, those two, Suarez and Truex, how long can they run? Yeah, they can go to about 20 to 30 to go on fuel, so they still can go another probably 40 to 50 laps. And honestly, I think they're past the point of no return. They're committed now. Yeah, you're landing the Betty May. Man, I tell you what, Kyle Busch has given William Byron fits trying to stay on that lead lap. And there William Byron is passing Suarez for the lead. So Byron, the first to pit in this green flag cycle, passes Daniel Suarez, one of the last two drivers on the racetrack who have not pitted. And that completes the cycle. Still 74 to go. Got to save those tires, save the temperature in them. You can do that with the brakes. He needs to get out of from this lap traffic. He wants that clean air so he can go back to managing his program. Kyle Busch in the eighth, last car on the lead lap in 21st place. Hard to manage anything when you're in that traffic that hard, aren't you, Nick, Kevin? Well, you have to. Let's look at the, the cycle here and, and William Byron being able to Pit first, put him from fifth to first. Bubba Wallace went from third to seventh. I think so. he was the biggest loser in all yeah, of that. I would agree. I mean, obviously, Denny Hamlin lost it from first to fifth, but uh, that car he owns, Bubba Wallace, was was certainly uh, didn't fare well in that pit stop. One, two, three. <laughs> The Hendrick cars, they're the ones that won that pit stop big time. And I think Rudy Frugel, he leads the charge in that. Great heads up call by being the first one on pit road and put his driver in a catbird seat. Great interview of Rick Hendrick by Chris Myers in the pre race talking about Martinsville Speedway where they got their first win in 84 with Jeff Bodine. The 100th win for Hendrick came at Michigan. Jimmy Johnson at Darlington for win number 200 and William Byron at Texas last September win number 300 for NASCAR's winningest team in history Hendrick Motorsports celebrating 40 years their Ruby anniversary here today. There are 28 wins here more than any other team at any track in NASCAR. We see William Byron still struggling to get by Kyle Busch and Kyle's doing everything he can do to stay on the lead lap but finally gives in and lets William Byron get by. See him still waving that blue flag with you the might as well save your energy with that blue flag at this place as hard as it is to pass. He knows he's trying to stay now it's not only he's in the lead uh, lucky dog spot so he has to work hard to stay there as he let, puts a car down he's got to go with him fill that hole. Daniel Hemrick going one lap down that'll leave 18 cars on the lead lap as Jeff Gordon looks on Larry. Yeah we got a little race trend for Martinsville the four races with the Gen 7 car 2022 2023 and we are there now the average of the last caution Lap 333, 67 laps to go. We did have an overtime finish two years ago. Remember this, though, our first overtime finish of 2024 last week at Richmond. Thanks, Larry. That advantage that William Byron got by pitting first and using those fresh tires to uh, get him the lead now by eight tenths of a second over his teammate Chase Elliott. Jamie. I talked to Rudy Fugel this morning crew chief for William Byron. There he is right there. He said walking in this morning it just felt different. You look around and saw Hendrick Motorsports gear everywhere. He wants this win bad but he knew they had an uphill climb. They qualify 18th. That's tied for the worst effort of the year. But they've had a fast race car, a good call to get his driver out front. Now they're sitting in the catbird seat looking at their third win of the season. Well, you got to be a little careful when you get to these big anniversary wins. I think it was 
approaching the 300th Hendrick win when here at Martinsville Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson took each other out fighting too hard to be the one to score that win for Rick Hendrick. Watch this. This was all but a caution right here. Briscoe hard in the bumper of. You can't really see it from that bumper cam how sideways he was but he was looking at the infield. That was uh, Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Gibbs now one lap down. Yeah, and Chase Briscoe just moved up to ninth. Has had a good car. I'm sure he's frustrated. They had a little bit of trouble on pit road and lost a few spots and had never really made those spots back up. So three Chevys lead two Fords. Uh, excuse me, lead two Toyotas, then Blaney's Ford, Bowman Chevy, and then three Fords to round out the top ten. Ford still looking for their first victory of the season. I heard you say the name Blaney, and I haven't really heard anything good out of that until that. I look over my shoulder, he's in sixth. That's pretty typical for Ryan Blaney. He's yep. a grinder. Regan? Well, Mike, that's exactly what they have done all day long is grinded. That car at one point was plowing tight earlier on. They've continued to make adjustments, of course, had that extra pit stop early on that cost them all that track position. More recently, though, just needed a little bit of security in that race car on the exit. He's been quiet since the green flag stop a minute ago. Daniel Suarez completes his pit stop finally under green. Uh, that leaves only Kaz Grala in 14th place, who has not stopped under this uh, green flag cycle. Well, one thing to think about is fatigue. These long runs, all this shifting, all the pressure that you have to have on the brake pedal, these guys are getting tired. It's a lot of work. 57 laps to go. Hendrick Motorsports in the top three spots out front as we take you Fox side by side. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Martinsville on FS1, presented by Mother's High Performance Car Care. William Byron leading Chase Elliott by 1.6 seconds. Now, in case you missed it, Kyle Larson started on the pole, led the first 86 laps of this race. 
and was the winner of stage one. Joey Logano took just two tires and held on to the lead for almost the same amount of laps, but when he pitted, those left side tires have been on for a long time and didn't look good. Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin battled for the lead. Hamlin prevailed, and he was the winner of stage two at lap 180. Only one caution early in stage three, and after a long green run, William Byron from two and a half seconds back was the first to pit, and when the pit cycle was done, he is the leader over Chase Elliott now by two seconds. Hendrick running one, two, three, with Bowman in seventh. Hamlin for Joe Gibbs in fourth. Ryan Blaney for Roger Penske. Team Penske making their 6,000th start across all series in fifth. Bubba Wallace sixth. Well, this car right here, Brian Blaney, he has had a fantastic day of making his car better. We see this out of the number 12 car and Ryan Blaney's team all the time, no matter the racetrack or what's happening, they, they have the ability to adjust on their car and be able to make it better throughout the day. Today, they had to actually come back in the pits because they didn't get the adjustment in, but they knew their car was bad enough that they had to adjust on it, and Clint, it is paying dividends. Fastest car on the track, bad fast. Ryan Blaney catching Danny Hamlin in front of him. Hamlin's running a 30, he's at a 10. 20's in front of them. Fast, fast race car. When the time's right, pay when it's open, boys. Go get it. Time to get paid. 43 laps to go. Kevin, how much physical, more physical, is racing here at Martinsville now that we're shifting four times a lap? Well, it just wears you out because you're doing a lot of, a lot of driving with, with one hand. You're shifting. You can see uh, the in-car that we had right there with, with Ryan Blaney. As he would go into the corners, his, his whole body would almost shift to the right. And you can see he's got his head up against the, up against the headrest. And, the shoulders kind of go to the right. They're getting tired and they're laying their heads up against the, against the headrest, trying to stay as relaxed as, po relaxed as possible. But it, it will absolutely wear you out, Clayton, on, on, a, on a day like this, even though it's 60 some degrees outside, it still gets pretty hot in there when you have these continuous laps and, and it's just a lot of work. The shifting aspect of, you know, Mike's question to you is what I see. I didn't have a chance to do that at a track like Martinsville, but it comes at a pretty, like watch no more than he gets it straight. He already had to take his hand off the wheel to shift right along with Chris Buescher. Yeah, and you can see Chris moves around a lot in his seat as he hits the brake, goes way forward on board with Ty Gibbs. It just seems like a pain to have to do it. I, I wish I told this yesterday. I wish we could do away with shifting, especially at a track like Martinsville. I don't know how to do it. I don't have all the answers, but I know that it would change the way these guys, you know, keep their momentum. A tight car will be tighter, won't respond to the throttle up off the corner because of the affordability of the shift. There's a lot of differences there that it would make in the overall outcome of this race, in my opinion. Everybody's got one, right? That's right. William Byron with a three second lead. Hendrick, one, two, three. This is the 151st Cup race at Martinsville, and no single team has ever finished one, two, three here. Wow. Well, if there's any team that can they can do that, it would be Hendrick Motorsports. And obviously, they have probably they always put a lot of effort in every week, but everybody knows how important this weekend is to them. And if there's anybody who can be a thorn in your rear, it's Denny Hamlin. <laughs> <laughs> he can break that little uh, celebration party away, and he's right there for the taking. Now, Austin Sindrick's on fresher tires, uh, and there's Hamlin, and here comes Blaney right after him. So Hamlin uh, can't wait around, but is he really quicker than Sindrick? Let's see. Well, he's frustrated with him. You saw him give two really big shots, but we see Ryan Blaney has caught Denny Hamlin. And he, we said it, I mean, he's definitely the fastest car on the track, Ryan Blaney, taking advantage of of Hamlin being door to door with Cindric right there, his teammate. Can he try to run in on the outside, do a crossover right here? That's what he's looking for. Gonna stay on the outside. Cindric lapped down in 18th. I think Denny run him up the racetrack. Yeah, I'm sure Denny thinks that this is probably um, a lot harder than it needs to be, but it's the way it goes. Oh. 
big shot by Denny Hamlin. You Austin have to. You oh, can. Josh Berry off the curb up into Ricky Stenhouse. Well, Cindric's tires are 15 laps fresher uh, than Hamlin's. So I think Barry and Stenhouse, that isn't over yet down here. Stenhouse repaid the favor getting into one. They're still door to door down the back stretch. Well, 30 laps to go about the time all those frustrations come out and payoffs and paybacks become the order of the day as we get to the closing stages here. A lot of green flag runs here. If I'm the leader, I don't want to say it, but it sure seems like we've been around here a long time. 1984, Rick Hendricks unsponsored all-star racing Chevrolet with Jeff Bodine at the wheel. They won the race, uh, they picked up a sponsor, and the rest is history. Sounds like a movie. Harry Hyde a, certainly made that movie. There was a lot of a uh, lot of that group in Days of Thunder, wasn't it? It almost was the Harry Hyde story. And the way that happened was during the filming of Days of Thunder, Harry Hyde was a consultant to the film crew. So during breaks in the shooting, he would sit and tell racing stories. And the movie writers, they were copying it all down, put a lot of it into the movie as it really happened. If Robert Duvall is your character. You're, you did something right. That was... Couldn't have been a better, awesome human being to be your character. It tells a lot about you. Well, the detriment of a lot of the cars that have been leading today is not being able to get through traffic. William Byron started, I think, 18th in this race and, and was able to get through traffic, and a great pit call put him in the lead. But catching all these lap cars towards the end of this race, William has done a pretty good job of being able to maneuver and get through traffic. He's got a huge gap to second place with Chase Elliott. He drove off from him. You spot on there, Kevin. Well, we saw Chase Elliott earlier have a little bit of a struggle in traffic, and that's when Denny Hamlin got by him. But Denny Hamlin has not been as good this run as he, as he has been the rest of the race. Well, next week we go to the big track in the big state on FS1. We're battling in Texas at Texas Motor Speedway. Free race kicks things off at 2 Eastern. Green flag at 3 next Sunday on FS1. William Byron 2.8 seconds ahead of Chase Elliott. Waiting to see who will get to wind the grandfather clock. Where's your clock Clint? It's in the living room. How about you? I heard you, yours are still in storage. My my wife my wife uh, didn't like the decor of the clock so she said it, it didn't need to go in the house and I said well it's going in the house. Uh, into the into the man cave so it lives in the garage and and soon going to get moved to the happy hour set. Well Martinsville used to give out traditional race trophies like all the other tracks. 1963 there's Fred Lorenzen uh, with such a trophy after he won the Old Dominion 500. But the track promoter Clay Earls on the left was friends with the fellow who owned Ridgeway Clock Company just three miles south of here and they said hey how about a grandmother clock as a race trophy. So in April 64, Red Lorenzen uh, got the first of those grandmother clocks that was presented to a winner. What happened to that clock? He gave it to his crew chief, Herb Nab, uh, who worked for Holman Moody and later won two championships with Cale Yarborough and Junior Johnson. When Nab passed, his widow took the clock and gave it to their friends and neighbor and cup driver, Ken Reagan. David Reagan's father. Oh, wow. And that clock is still in the Reagan's household. And Lorenzen's daughter, Amanda, says she gets a nice note and a picture from Ken with the clock every year or so, showing her it's still in the racing family and wow. being well taken care of. That's a great story. How do I, you know that? I, I learn something every week about racing cars, <laughs> some sort of historic anything. I wish they could show the look on our faces when he goes off on those history lessons. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All right, 20 to go next time by. For William Byron, who is off to another great start as he was one year ago with multiple wins early in the season. Larry, how much of a gamble was it for William Byron to pit early several laps before any of the other contenders? 
Well, I had set it up right before that, Mike. You know, the, the downside of, of pitting it all in the green at a half mile racetrack with how long pit road is, is you're going to go a lap and a half down. And that was the gamble. But I think Rudy Fugel said, you know what? We got a couple of wins. That change, that gives you a bigger playbook. When you've got two wins, that opens up a lot more for you. And obviously it cycled through and it cycled them right to the lead. Exactly. Byron was playing with house money. With wins in the bank. 18 to go. Yeah, the only thing I don't like right now is he's been stuck behind Chris Busher for several laps now. What I do like about that, and the reason I think you see that there's no pressure. Take your time with these guys. Do not force an issue. Don't put yourself in trouble. You've got a huge lead here. Manage it. And Rudy Fugel on that box is helping him do that. I've never seen this before at Martinsville, but there's so much rubber down with all these long green flag runs that even the outside line down in one and two is starting to rubber up completely way out on the outside. Well, as we ride on board with Chris Busher right here, you go down in here to turns one and two, you really see the blackness of the racetrack right where the right side tires are right there, but it, it's really starting to cake up down there Big in time. turns one and two. I mean, you can see it. From the end cars, just the, look at that. You say they cake up. It's more so down in one and two than it is three and four. 16 to go, Larry Mack. Watch this right here. You can literally see I the can rubber. I promise you, those crew chiefs are still busy on top of those pit boxes thinking about the what if. Right now, we still have 14 drivers on the lead lap. They're closing in on 85 to 90 laps on these tires. What if this caution comes out? That's where it's going to be a big, big gamble. Clint, you say it every week. What that 24 wants to see is that white flag because we know the next flag will end the race. Well, if it doesn't, I think it's going to be two tires that win the race. If that caution comes out, we've learned that with Logano, you're going to need two tires and a quick stop at that. If we go to overtime, it'll be somebody's bumper that wins the race. <laughs> that too. Ross Chastain, last car on the lead lap in 14. That's a hard car to pass, guys. Slapped all the way up to 14th place. Everybody, what would do that? Two weeks ago or last week? Everybody said the hardest car on this racetrack to pass is that one car. Well, he even agreed with them. I, I'm right now. That lead is going away quickly. You see, Chase Elliott's down to 1.5. And that's what we saw earlier when Chase Elliott was leading and Dem Denny Hamlin caught him. It, that lead evaporated quickly. Well, wow. you see those two cars door to door in front of Chastain. All that starts to compile in front of you. And that's what really starts slowing down and cutting that lead deficit in half. You see Chase Elliott back there with his teammate Larson behind him. Still one, two, three for the Hendrick camp. Yeah, and, and really his only hope is so like you said, really the best thing that the 24 has going for him is that gap and just managing uh, the lead right now because Chase is going to have to fight some of the same battle that, that William Byron is to get through traffic. William starting to put the pre uh, pressure on Chastain, moving him up the racetrack. I agree with that move. It was time, but Chastain's not done yet. Hard to believe in 70 some years, 76 years of racing here, no team has ever had a 1-2-3 finish. And it could happen here nine laps from now. Moving him up the racetrack one and two took care of business. That's you would never think that William Byron is that aggressive driver, right? It's just his personality, his demeanor is not there, but he does the right moves at the right time. And that's why he's won so many races. That right there was a, a heads up move. Knew yeah. it was time, moved one of the hardest guys to pass out of the way, Ross Chastain. Well, when you when you get inside the race car, you have to be able to know when to do that and, and here at Martinsville you have to pick and choose your spots in order to not make somebody mad and that was just one of those moments where being the leader of the race you had to put yourself in a position to get by Ross Chastain. Not every day you see that man nervous. I guarantee you Jeff Gordon I stood up here in the booth boys with him as you did Mike for many years. That guy is more nervous sitting on that box right now than he was when he was in that 24 leading these races. Well, I don't think he's nervous for William Byron because Byron now has a four car buffer between himself and Chase Elliott. You darn right he's nervous. He wants to win this race and deliver this win back. And Elliott has two car lengths on Kyle Larson. And there's a big gap back to the next car. You couldn't script this any better for them. The only thing that can wipe this out 
is we know what that is. Can it happen? Will it happen? Well, the only question right now in the Hendrick household is going to come from Linda. It's going to be why didn't Alex Bowman finish fourth? <laughs> Good point. Well, this screen play uh, run is over 185 laps. And the last time we had one that long here at Martinsville was September of 1996. Clear back to 96. That's pretty amazing. I've never seen the track, the rubber build up and, and the groove move up like this. I mean, they're legitimately running clear up in the second, almost third lane and finding speed. Well, William Byron has the most speed right now. He's just stretching this lead out. And look now at he's the, got some clear track. Absolutely. Look at all the clear track ahead. I think he can ride right there and get the job done. And that last time we had this long a green flag run, who went to victory lane? Jeff Gordon. In oh my 24. gosh, I don't want to say it. Nemechek. Nemechek. I think he blew a tire right front. All right, pressure's on. What just, are we going to do? Just like last week in the final three laps. Caution. Unbelievable. Blew it right front. Yeah, it looks like the or brakes, maybe brake brakes went were on out. fire yeah. and blew the tire. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing comes easy in this sport. Got to earn it. Make the right calls here. Everybody hit their marks. Driver, hit your marks coming in the box. Boys, I need you now more than ever. All right, watch John Hunter Nemechek here in the Skip Barber Racing oh, the car. Oh, brakes. Yep. Yeah. You were See right. See the tire blow out right there as he went and hit the brakes going in the corner. See that right front, right front just drop. Oh, no. <sighs> And it never fails. No, you Perfect. knew it. I mean, that's why he was nervous. He wasn't nervous that William well, Byron was going to mess up. He was nervous that that caution come out and take this from them. They had it. One, two, three. They still have it. We got to make the right calls here, and and everything can be fine. But they they have. Uh, there's a lot can go wrong here. Look at the irony in who brings that caution out. Who's one of the owners of that number 42? Nine-time Martinsville winner for Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson. Well, there's only there's only 13 cars on the lead lap right now, so you don't have a huge buffer. But I, I, I don't think you can put more than two tires on. Do you, Larry? I think you're going to see people staying out. I think you're going to see two tires. I think it's going to be a smorgasbord. The bottom line, you guys know, if you're not in the first two rows on the restart, if you don't do something off the wall, it's you're not going to win the race. Yeah, and it's going to get physical. Well, that's and I think that's where you have to work it, right? Everything has to go right here. If you're William Byron, you're got to. If you come in and take two tires, you're darn right. One of those guys in the back is going to stay out and try to go for track position. Now you're going to have to put the bumper to him and move him out of the way. Yeah, it's and, going to be. I think he's saying his hair's standing up on his arms. And the way everybody races here, who's to say there's only going to be one restart? Oh, well, with these next gen cars, it, they're just so tough that you can you can do a lot of pushing and you can do a lot of shoving and those noses and, and tails are still going to be fine. So uh, this is going to get as physical of any race that we've seen so far. The bad news is for William Byron, your leader, the cost should come out with three laps to go. The good news is if you're Rick Hendrick is all three of your cars are running one, two, three. You've got three shots at this. Well, they're using code. Chris Gabehart just told Denny Hamlin, quarter pounder. He says, I don't have that code on my dash. What is that? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe he was calling in his that lunch, his lunch order. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the restart. I know we're going to have pit stops here, but, you know, last week, the last restart at Richmond was the subject of controversy all week long. Martin Truex had dominated the race. Did he deserve to win it? Yeah, he probably did. Uh, did Denny Hamlin get away with one? Yeah, he probably did. But I had a long talk with Alton Sawyer this morning, NASCAR's senior VP of competition. We talked about the restart zone as being like a strike zone in baseball. There's ball and strike calls. It's a bang-bang call, he said. There, Hamlin is throttled up. And here, before the zone starts, so is Truex. And they ended up even down in turn number one. So NASCAR made the call, quickly reviewed the call, said it was good, and raced on. We inquired, was the call under further review? They said no. Ball and strike call, but uh, 
Elton told me this morning, he said, if we see something egregious, we will react accordingly. Here's some Denny Hamlin radio. I mean, green white checker is just going to be bumper cars for two laps, right? I mean, what the hell is tires even going to do? Get more. I don't know where you're going to go. That's a good question. Well, that that's true, and it is going to be bumper cars because everybody's going to want to do everything that they can to put themselves in position to win the race. And if it means shove two guys in front of you out of the way, that's what you got to do. Well, he's got the forward ability to watch these other guys. He's probably going to do something the opposite of what they do. If Byron Pitts in there, you darn right. Chris Gabehart said, "Stay out," and that's what he's thinking. Do what they don't. Now they are still cleaning up from the fire under the right front of uh, John Hunter Nemechek's car, which is now being towed off to the garage. So pit road will be closed for uh, at least one more lap here. Well, if those three Hendrick cars are all in the same strategy, that's that's two rows uh, that you can clog up on the inside. You got Denny Hamlin on the outside talking like he's not going to pit. So that's it's only two laps. And it's like Larry said, I mean, it's going to be really, really difficult to make up that in, in two laps here at Martinsville if you don't if you aren't in the first two rows. Still have a lot of cleanup down here in the pits with Nemechek still on fire, by the way. That's what the delay is. A lot of a lot of cleanup down in Nemechek's pit box. I you know, feel for you, Rudy Fugel, man. He is uh, oh that head is spinning. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's I told a you, pile yeah. of speedy dry and Half of Myrtle Beach sitting if, down there. If Alex Bowman was planning on pitting, it's going to be hard to get out of that stall. Yeah, they're going to have to sweep it up there. There's that grandfather clock. Who's going to get it? Well, let's just make something clear. That's <laughs> a replica of the grandfather clock. That one's a little bit beat up, Clint. Look at that thing. I hate to say this. Looks like it's run a few laps here. Yeah. It's been bolted down. Yeah, they come. I ain't too sure. They that, come in a box. They, yeah, they, 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 Reagan's they old together. man has that. I, that well, one looks like the original right there. All right, so it is still a Ridgeway <laughs> clock, uh, even though Howard Miller, a big clockmaker in Zeeland, Michigan, bought Ridgeway nearly 20 years ago. They kept making clocks in Ridgeway until finally the plant closed. Now they're made in Michigan, but it's still a Ridgeway clock. Uh, that goes to the winner. You didn't know that either, did you, Kevin? No, I did not, but it's still one of the most unique trophies in NASCAR, and everybody yes. in this field wants one. Nor do I know where Zeeland, Michigan is. Yeah. See, I think this is the model that we got right here, Kevin. I think this <laughs> is, I don't know what happened. Let me show you. I've got, I've got that one. Got that one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that one. Look at this one from the 80s, the 80s model right here. All right, huh? that, come on, that adds from about 1973. Yeah. I don't know. That one looks like an 80s model. <laughs> like, I'm so nervous. I'm just making stuff up up here. I am nervous for everybody involved in this equation. There's a lot of decisions being made. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this happened. Uh, big hats off to our Fox Sports crew, our cameramen, our tape operators. Everybody who is involved in putting this show on. And congratulations to the weekend's winners Christian Eckes in Trucks, Eric Almarola in the Xfinity Series, and on FS1, John Force won last night. Hey, at the how age about of that? 74 years and 11 months, and he's made it to the semifinal round today. My hero, on fire out Excuse there. Me. Hey, I want to bring something up here. There is a tremendous amount of cars between your first place car, William Byron, and your second place car, Chase Elliott. Rudy Fugel has a decision to make. They're all going to be able to watch him way before then. The pressure is on Rudy Fugel. What do you do, pit or not pit? They're open. Right, watch it. open. And uh, let me correct, Tony Stewart has made it to uh, the semifinal round. You'll have drag racing coverage later tonight on FS1. Well, I don't think no. no. Red light's still on on pit road. Yeah, the lights on are red. No, it's no, green. It is it green? Danny Hamlin's pitting. I told you, do what they don't. A lot of cars stayed out right there. I think Danny Hamlin's in trouble. Hamlin, three other cars in the back of the pack are pitting Jamie well we listened to that radio on the 11 it sounded like they didn't want to pit that there was no point in pitting but here they are coming down for their last stop of the day as they jack the right side clear tear off this will be an interesting strategy call to see how much ground the 11 can make up five time winner here at Martinsville they know how to get it done I don't know if there's enough time though Mike so Tyler Reddick Eric Jones and Ryan Priest all on the lead lap all pitted 
A yeah, lot of rolling around here under caution. Clean these tires up. All you guys on old, old, old tires. You see William Byron scrubbing them things in. All that rubber that we were talking about got picked up like a vacuum. What vacuum what was? It was these race cars. Yeah, and the vacuum is is the, the hot, sticky tires that, that picked it up off the racetrack. So uh, we've seen William Byron warming up his tires really since the, the caution came out. Like they never had any plan to any plan to pit. He knew he needed to keep them clean. And if he didn't, if he did pit, they were only going to put two tires on to keep those left sides clean. So now six of the lap down cars are pitting. I think they thought some more cars were going to pit there. They're way back. Well, it's still going to be a race between the cars up front. Hamlin will restart 10th. Yeah, the, the cars up front that, that didn't pit. I mean, you still have that opportunity to push and shove, but for William Byron's sake, he knows that Kyle Larson's probably not going to shove as hard as it w if it was somebody else not on his team. <laughs> for my first days in a car, Kevin, alongside of you, what did they tell you? I don't care what you do, don't wreck yourselves. Yeah. Do not take this win from our company. So Denny Hamlin was told on the radio, if any of the Hendrick cars pit, stay out. They didn't. He did the opposite. He came in. Do what they don't. Ooh, somebody there was right over the choose V. That's because we're not choosing yet. Okay. Yeah, the lap cars are, are dropping back, so the, yep. the lead lap cars are uh, catching up and lining themselves up in front of the lap down cars that did not pit. Will this be? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously an overtime, and you said it, Mike. Will it be only one? I, who knows? There's a lot going to happen here. Cautions breed cautions. I really thought that this equation would be shook up a lot farther than this. Well, it's still going to be really difficult to get going. The cars are up front that, that did not pit are not going to feel very good. That things are going to take off headed north when you're trying to go the other way down here in turn one. Have to be ready for it. They're all going to be that way. Don't overdrive the corner and slide up. Don't wreck each other. The best thing the three Hendrick Chevys up front have going for them is that the six cars right behind them did not pit either. You have a big gap back to Hamlin with four fresh tires who will restart. Well right now he's 10th. We'll see how the choose goes. Such a huge turnaround for Ryan Blaney in that 12 car. They have been all over the place in this racetrack today. Yeah and if Chase Elliott can stay close on this restart on the outside and keep William Byron from making the exit of that corner he's going to have a shot at this thing but it's all going to talk um, happen on the takeoff here on the restart and how he can get into turn one and, and how far he can stay up beside William Byron. There has been a tremendous amount of rubber picked up. It's all on these tires. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get them tires cleaned up. Get some temperature back in them, spin them. Do everything you can do. Clean these babies up. John Hunter Nemechek checked and released at the infield care center. So the front row is Byron and Elliott. Kyle Larson is third in the stealing seat and he is right alongside Ryan Blaney the first non Hendrick car in the race. You said it and that is a stealing seat if those cars drive off in the corner he's got the forward ability to back off a little bit let them race each other off in the corner they both slide up take it and move each other up the track they will hand it to him. All right here we go to credit one overtime at Martinsville Byron Elliott green flag. Stuck pretty good there, Kevin. I'm surprised. Three wide back there. Hamlin still 10. Elliott put the bumper to him. Chase Elliott to third. Crash turn four. Three cars around. I no think they flag. made it white. No, no flag. Still white green. flag. Green, green, green. green. Everybody gets away. Slipping and sliding around. Byron way out in the front. Likes what he sees in the mirror. Larson trying to steal second from Chase Elliott. Wallace behind him. William Byron comes to the flag and wins the cookout 400. One, two, three finish for Hendrick Motorsports. 40th anniversary. Look at these people on their feet off of two. Unbelievable. Oh, All their employees oh, off of two on their feet. That is awesome. First time that's ever happened at Martinsville Speedway. One team taking the top three spots. Oh, yeah. I told you all that yesterday. Hell yeah. Great job, boys. Great pit stop. 
1,500 people here just saw their guys win the race. That's pretty good. 13th career win for William Byron. And third of the season, he is 3-4-8. I think in any league you'd like to be batting 375 at this point in the season. Hey, I was nervous for him. I was yeah. nervous for all of them. He needs to drive on over there to turn two in front of all those employees over there and do that burnout. They're the ones that brung him. Last fall of Martinsville, he ran only a handful of laps in the top ten all day. And here, thanks in part to a pit stop call that here got him I think the he's first gonna, car. What? In the green flag cycle to pit, and he drives to victory Watch and goes to celebrate in front of the Hendrick faithful outside turn two. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Put it right in the fence. Burn it down. Regan? Well, Jeff Gordon down here with Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff, you've seen a lot of things in your day. A one, two, three on the 40th anniversary of that first win. You just can't script it any better. First, I just want to say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Hendrick. I know how bummed they were not to be here, but how excited they are that all of our folks are here to be able to see this happen. I mean, you just you can't script it like this. I knew we had good race cars when they showed up here yesterday, but the, the race, the way it played out to get, you know, that, that green flag stop was it. Our cars were just so good on the short runs. We just need to get that track position. and. Then that last race, oh my God, I did not want to see that. <laughs> um, and then I just was so hoping we could get the one, two, three. And I'm just, you know, these guys, uh, these these three guys as well as Bowman, I mean, they just drove their butts off. Great race. But how about that, that William Byron, that 24 car? Every time we have a milestone day or opportunity or, or, or moment, he steps up and, uh, you know, he got number 300. And this is this is going to be a huge one for him and, and the whole organization. Thank you. Congrats, Jeff. Enjoy the celebration. Nine drivers have now accounted for Hendrick Motorsports' 29 victories at Martinsville, the most by an organization at any single track. The 26-year-old from Charlotte, North Carolina, celebrates his 13th career NASCAR Cup win. Jamie. He said I was happy yesterday with this race car. This pit crew got it done. William wants to get that checkered flag. William, the celebration all weekend long for Hendrick Motorsports 40th anniversary. You get the job done. You're the one standing here. What does it mean to you, to Rudy, and this entire team? Yeah, I just uh, I just want to thank Chase for racing me clean there. It could get really physical at the end. and. Uh, you know, he gave me a shot, which is expected, but uh, we all finished it off. So just uh, so proud of everyone at Hendrick Motorsports. Um, grew up a big Hendrick fan, and uh, to be here for the 40th anniversary and all that goes into just this organization, all the people, it's all about the people. And just want to thank Mr. Hendrick and, and Linda and, and everyone involved. So um, it's pretty pretty awesome, pretty badass to win it. At Martinsville, we've been, uh, been struggling at the short tracks and uh, just – kept inching up on it and I got a great team and um, they just kept my head in it and it stunk to uh, do a restart there at the end like that but uh, you know it's the way it goes. That's what I was going to ask you about two moments in particular Rudy decides under green flag conditions to bring you down pit road first that got you the track position and then two laps to go the caution comes out how did you handle all that? Yeah I mean that was a great call it didn't get us the the track position right away but we had a little bit uh, more heat in our tires so uh, it seemed like I fired off a little bit faster than those guys and was able to, to get a, ahead of them. So we had a great car in the third stage, first and third stage. And um, just want to thank all the 24 fans. Thanks for sticking with us and uh, just uh, just super excited. I don't really know how to put it in words, but I'm a little tired. I hit the wall over there. So I hit the wall a lot this weekend. So I don't know why. <laughs> Congratulations. William Byron wins at Martinsville. Well, Kyle Larson comes up in the runner-up comes home in the runner-up position. Kyle, I know you always want to win a race, but I got to imagine with the circumstances today that this is pretty special. Yeah, no doubt. It's uh, really special too to get a, a one-two-three there with uh, William, Chase, and I. So, um, yeah, just a, a great day for Hendrick Motorsports. It's been a great 40 seasons for them. Uh, really cool to have you know 1,500 people here from Hendrick Motorsports to celebrate. And congrats to William. He did it. He did a really good job. Um, Kind of just schooled us all there after that green flag stop. He did a really good job passing all of us. So 
And then he was able to set a good pace and still get through traffic good. So um, my car, though, felt felt really good as well. I think we were all kind of the same speed, honestly. So uh, just lost a little bit of, little bit of track position there in the second stage and just was never kind of able to overcome it. But uh, solid day. Congrats to Rick Hendrick, Linda, uh, all of Hendrick Motorsports. Everybody who's here at the racetrack as well as you know back at home. So um, just off, awesome day. Chad, racing teammates at the end like that. How nerve-wracking is that when you know that you're one, two, three, and you want to try and keep it that way? So yeah, no, it was uh, it was sketchy. I wasn't sure you know, how aggressive you know, they were going to be. I knew William obviously was going to be very aggressive because he was going to win until that caution came out, and uh, you know, they kind or he went in there and, and doored him up a little bit, and um, then yeah, just uh, thankfully though it all kind of shook out, and we were able to get one spot there and, and still get a top three for HMS. Thanks, Scott. We're going to step over here to Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, the third place finisher, the other part of this 1-2-3 today. It looked like you gave it everything you had on that last restart. Just couldn't quite get there. Unfortunately, lost a spot too when it was all said and done. Oh, yeah. Second or third. What's it matter, you know, at that point? But, uh, yeah, you know, obviously, number one, congrats to William and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, Rick and Linda and, and all the folks, uh, Jeff and Jeff and Chad and, and all the people that uh, – you know, put this together for us. That they have a, a unbelievable program, and and I think we're all proud to call it home. And and uh, it was awesome hosting um, over a thousand uh, folks from from Hendrick today, employees and their families. So uh, glad one of us could get it done. Obviously, wish we could have got it done. You know, selfishly like anybody would. But uh, nice to have a couple solid weeks and and to be in contention there for a win is um, you know hadn't been in contention to win one in a while. So it was fun to to kind of get to that last restart and, and, and it actually matters. So um, enjoyed that aspect and, and certainly hungry for more. You mentioned being in contention there. It seems like this nine team really starting to hit their stride, knocking on that door to get that win. How good does that feel to know that it's coming closer? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've the last couple of weeks and, and really not just the last couple of weeks, but I feel like uh, throughout a lot of the season this year, we've just been working in a good direction, working really well together, and, and um, pit stops have been really good. Allen's been calling really good races. I mean, all that stuff has been going uh, in, a, in a really positive direction, in my opinion, and um, I think if we can just keep producing that, we'll, we'll get our turn one day. Thanks, Chase. Congrats. 18 years ago, Bill Byron brought his then eight-year-old son to see his first ever NASCAR race at Martinsville. Today, that young man, William Byron, leads a 1-2-3 Hendrick finish in the Cookout 400. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.